Ah, yeah. Hi there. Ah, yeah. Just glad the sound's working on this. I thought it wasn't going to work there. Or the video. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to all be going okay technically so far. Just a wee couple of minutes ago to go, I'll maybe take down that notice and just copy the contents into the chat bar because I feel like I can't see everybody. <laughs> I know Teams is like that, isn't it? I thought WebEx was pretty good where you could see you could see everyone. This is WebEx we're using tonight. Uh, sorry, I know. I've got mixed up. I, don't, I thought that should be better. That's what I meant to say rather oh, than, than Teams. Yeah. It's not great, you can't see everybody. Everybody's very silent. <laughs> That's now came up in the chat bar huge, but I'm, I'm not shouting at people, honestly. I just I couldn't make the, the, the text any smaller because I have to copy and paste it, so apologies. <laughs> just to remind you that tonight's me. will be live streamed.
Sorry, Leanne, I never heard that about you broke up a wee bit. Did you just say about your live streams? Yeah, we've started live streaming already. Um, so it was just to, we had a wee notice up, but then I couldn't see everyone because of the notice, so I just put it in a bar, but it's so apologies for that. <laughs> We'll just give it another minute or so and see if we've got people, sometimes people trying to log on and we'll give it a minute and then we'll get started. It went through a different process the night, so maybe some people are having a bit of difficulty. Yeah, we'll just wait a second, Mary, and see if sometimes people have difficulty logging on at the beginning. We were quite concerned because I don't feel that um, hotel accommodation is appropriate for asylum seekers and we would welcome the opportunity to have discussions um, with the Home Office about the hotel. John Joe is getting asked for a password and he doesn't have a password. I think you need to join as a guest, Mary. So you shouldn't try and sign into the meeting. You have to go in through as a guest. Uh, did you join in as a guest? Go back through and join as a guest. Me and not. Yeah, aye. But when you go through it, it, it asks you to join as a guest. So. Go back through it again and oh you've got it right oh now i'm lost <laughs> now I, oh no there i'm back right okay right bye That's 18.35. I'm conscious that we have quite a large, large agenda to get through tonight, so 
with your permission, I think we'll just get started. And if people want to come in, if you haven't already done so, if you can, there was a notice up earlier, if you can put your name in the chat bar and if you're representing any organisation, that would be really helpful. And then we know who you are. So welcome. My name's to this uh, November uh, meeting of the Shots Community Board. My name's Kenny Stevenson. I'm one of the councillors for, for TISSET and I'll be chairing the meeting tonight. So I know that we're going to have a couple of new people here tonight, so very warm welcome to you as well. Uh, and if you want to comment, feel free at the appropriate time. If we can move on uh, and we move on to the apologies. Do we have any apologies for tonight? Uh, I've got a list of apologies here, Chair. I'll just run through them. I've got apologies from Councillor McCulloch, from Councillor Quigley, from Emma Shepherd in the NHS, Janice Connolly and Mags Murphy from Shorts Tenants and Residents Association. Uh, I've got apologies in from Ray McLean, Aislinn Waters, Lorraine Brown, Craig Bridges, Louise Murphy, Brian Trainer, Margaret McLean. I've also been contacted by Mark Kay from the NHS. He is having trouble getting on. So I've resent on the link and he's trying to connect, but if he can get on, we'll note his apologies as well. Thanks, Ross. Is there any other apologies that anyone else has? No. John Duffy's trying to get on and Leslie's having trouble as well. So I've sent them the link. Great, that's great. Hopefully they managed to get on then, Mary. Leslie as well. Okay, so can we go to agenda item three, which is the action note of the previous meeting and any matters arising from that? Does anyone wish to speak to that? Mary? Looking through, I didn't see a record of the complaints that we raised at the last meeting. But I think, Ross, did you say something to Leslie about it going through an action note? Yep, that's correct. This isn't a minute of the meeting, so it doesn't record verbatim what's discussed. There wasn't any action from that because it was raised as just for the board's information. But I have explained it because it's an agenda item tonight that will refer back to the original point it was raised at the previous board meeting. Thanks, Ross. Is there anyone else wishes to make comment on the action note? OK, if we can move forward on to agenda item four, the chair of the community board arrangements. Now, I'm filling in for Craig Bridges tonight. Craig's been doing a really good job of being chair, uh, so I believe he'll be back uh, next time. But please feel free, if you're interested in being the chair of the, the board, then you can certainly put yourself forward. Uh, and if you wish to contact Ross or Maureen or, or Leanne, then uh, please do so. Made it, made it. You're on, John. Good to see you. I've never been looking for it. I've just voted you chair for the next meeting. Well, if, every, if everyone can be cognizant of the fact that, you know, if you wish to be chair to gain experience, then please feel free to contact one of the officers. That being said, we'll move on to agenda item five, which is a community champion update. And that's from Stephen Llewellyn, who is the Housing uh, Solutions Manager. Stephen. Thanks very much, Chair. Um, so I've got a wee bit of kind of connection kind of problems tonight as well. So it's back on. It's OK just now. I've had to put my video off there um, just to make sure. So just very, very briefly, um, just as an update where, where we were and where we're at. In terms of my role, I've carried out a number of walkabouts, uh, predominantly in the, the shots area. In the last number of months, myself, um, Ross, Leanne, and Maureen as well, uh, a number of different uh, groups in the community. From my point of view, I found it hugely rewarding and very informative. Uh, and I suppose I'm really just putting out there. I know the weather's terrible; it's freezing and everything else. Not the best time of year to do it, but um, I'm putting out there that we're more than happy to do that with other groups and not just for shots. I know that we've kind of probably concentrated in shots in recent times, but I'm aware that the wider area in terms of Arlington, Hart Hill and Salisbury as well 
I know that Ross and Maureen have also did a, a walkabout though in Salisbury. Um, so I'm really just putting it out from our point of view. It's great to do. Do we know the areas? We do know the areas. Do we know them as well as, as you? Absolutely not. Um, and that's what I found it um, really, really good to actually do the walkabouts. And from the walkabouts, there's also a number of um, actions that have come out as well. So that, that's been a real good start in terms of us getting a grasp of what's going on in the area, what people, what the priorities for people in the area. But it's really just a, a basically an offer that if any any individuals or groups or whatever um, are interested in doing that and want us to come see a certain bit of their community, then we're, we're more than happy, more than prepared to do that. And the other side of that is not just coming out and doing the walkabouts. We've got to come out and do a walkabout actually that sums at the other end of it as well. Um, it's not always we're going to be able to say yes as well when we're out, but at least we're able to say, well, we're out, we see the problems or the issues or whatever, and here's what we can or can't do. So um, it, it, it's really just a, a plea, um, Chair, that if anybody wants us to do that, they contact us separately away from the meeting, then we're more than happy to do that. We can't. We can't. We can't hear you. You. I don't know if it's me, but you are a sound council. Oh, is uh, was it that? Can you hear me? Now? Hear yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'd flicked that up out the way there. No, I think that's fantastic, Stephen. I think that's that's good. You know, I'd spoken to residents. You know, after the the walkabouts, and and they were pleased. You know that that uh, the council were actually looking uh, at, at some of their concerns, and there was that two way. Uh, conversation, which was absolutely fantastic. Are there any comments for Stephen or any questions that you would like at, at this time? John? John? No, I would just like to thank Stephen for his time because I know he's a busy man, but I appreciate him coming and spending so much time with us. Excuse me, I've got a bad chest. Can John, John, Joe, yeah, you wanted in, yeah. Stephen? See, just recently I had a, a walkabout with Jim Forrest for Tarbothy Road. It was regarding Mans Road Football Park and the Dane Garden walkways. The fences, uh, there have been gates taken away. The, the quad bikes have been coming in, the trail bikes, and the park is an absolute mess. I've been doing the village on it and it's all churned up and all the paths are off. Uh, rutted because of the bikes and the quad bikes going over them. The end we can do to get these gates back on and uh, try and keep the place uh, a wee bit more accessible for people walking round about. Yeah, we can certainly have a have a look at it, John Joe, and find out why they were taken away. So obviously they're taken away and it's causing that kind of damage and everything else that's not good enough. So. <laughs> Um, let's have a look at it between myself or Ross to see who's responsible and see what we can do for it then. I think the problem is it's the bikers or whoever it is is taking these gates off and then they're, they're getting free access to the, the full area. Okay. I can pick that up for you just now, Stephen. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, absolutely, John, Joe, we've been out for a couple of site visits. The gates haven't been removed by the council. They have been cut off by people in the local area to get access. So we have instructed works to replace some of the gates and the fencing with things that won't be able to get removed and also bringing some boulders into the site to try and disrupt access. However, I would point out that the council are going in and replacing these things and it's people in the community that are then cutting down either fences or gates and removing them to get back in. So we're replacing, we've got on order trip rails for next to the football pitch, boulders to be brought in for the access up there as well. It's sort of Man's Road, I think it is off the top of my head. And also some other gates up at the top of Stain Garden. So <clears throat> all that work's been scheduled and we're planning for it to be completed by the end of this calendar year. But as I say, all we can do is go in and carry out all the work and hope that somebody doesn't go back in and remove the gates again. Uh, but it certainly wasn't the council that took the gates down. Thank for that. Hi, Ray. You want to come in there? Can I request then that same thing happens up at the Turbothy Farm entrance into the walk down towards Bow because that's an absolute eyesore. And it's the same thing. It's quad bikes and motorbikes, which I've been complaining about for well over a year. Certainly, Ray, if you can email me. Uh, I'll email you pictures, Ross. 
yeah, if you email it directly to me, Ray, I'll yeah. pick it up and we'll certainly look at it. As long as it's on council ground where it's sitting, yes, we can absolutely look at trying to do something around that. And if it's not, we'll look at any other solutions we can do. But if you send the, the information about it, Ray, direct to me, I'll pick that up. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for that, John Joe. Thanks, Ray. I, th I think that, that that's good, Ross. And I think that we've got uh, Alan Mulholland from Police Scotland with us. And I'm not going to ask Alan to come in on that uh, just now, but I know that uh, the councillors and residents have asked as well. And the police have been out doing a good job with their new trail bikes. They've been in Salisbury, uh, they've been in Shots, and I know they've certainly been in Hart Hill uh, looking at this quad bike uh, situation and the, the mini motorbikes as well. So perhaps we might hear from Alan uh, later on with that too. So. Thanks. Does anybody else want to comment on the quad bike situation across across Vertissa? No. Okay. So if if we can move on and sorry, gonna... sorry, Chair. Sorry. I think uh, I think is that Frank from Salisbury? Maybe his hand up there. Sorry, Frank. Sorry, I never saw you there. It's all right, Kenny. It was just to say, as you know, that I think it's the same throughout Vertissa. <clears throat> We've all got the same issues with quads and bikes going in damaging the football park because they can come in at this side through the forest. So fortunately Ross was in a walkabout with us and we're looking at potentially getting boulders put in place that still allows maintenance of like the telephone poles, etc. But it'll stop the quads getting right through onto the park because it's a bit off putting for the football teams that they can't play at home now because the park is getting really badly damaged. But again, that comes down to us as a community trying to reinforce that they need to make um, the police aware, but as well as the the helpline as well, that they can phone anonymously, the crime stoppers. So Ross is going to be looking out some brochures for crime stoppers for us that we'll be distributing through our community and try and get everybody behind it because it's easy enough to phone the cops and say, you know, this is getting damaged, but when the cops get there, Nobody's willing to come forward or you know, give any identification. But time stoppers, I think, would be the way to go for everybody. So we should look at maybe promoting that. Yeah, I think you're right, Frank. You know, it's certainly, you know, when residents come to us with uh things about quad bikes or even speeding, and there's a lot of speeding things that requests that we get, you know, for the police to come out. And we advise them at the time if they see anything. Then 101 is certainly the, the the number to call, and it gets logged through that as well. So you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Is there anyone else wants to comment on that situation? I see a few hands up, Chair, but I don't know if they're just left from earlier on. Mary and Ray, are you still wanting in? Mary and then no. Ray. Well, we can have Mary. Ray's okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to say Stephen, Ross, Leanne and Maureen all come out for a walkabout with us. You have maybe covered this, but I've been distracted to be getting folk on and things. Um, so it's really just to give the feedback that that is really helpful, actually having people coming out, seeing what you're talking about, experiencing it, and, you know, as opposed to it just being there for dialogue or something in writing, it does make it real and I, I do feel that the concerns we're taking on board and especially at Shots Cut Road and I know we'll bring that up later with the accident and the lively traffic so it was really just to acknowledge that. Thanks for that Mary. Was there anyone else that I missed? Sorry about that. No, That's it. Okay. That's everyone I can see here Chairs. Right, thanks Ross. Can we now move on to agenda item six, which is the town business update? And that's Stephen again. Sorry, sorry, it's just very, very briefly, Chair. Um, as everybody's aware, there have been presentations um, over the last number of months. There's been um, significant levels of correspondence as well. Um, it went through the Policy and Strategy Committee at the end of September. And it's really just people probably aware they've seen probably in social media and the council's corporate comms that it was approved that committee. Uh, again, I just want to um, say to people, it, it's a vision. Um, it's absolutely a vision. Nothing else will happen just now without further consultation in terms of the Fortisat uh, ward and shots. 
um, the wider community. Nothing else will happen just now. It's not in the priorities as far as I, I've been led to believe in terms of the first five years. Um, but whatever's going to happen and how that's going to progress, we will absolutely, and we've got that commitment from day one, we'll come back out and we will talk to the community. Um, but it was really just to give the update that it did go to policy strategy. It was approved at that point. But this is the, the corporate vision for the nine town centres, if you like, or the nine town hubs across North Lanarkshire, not just specifically about shots. And again, I just want to reassure the, uh, the community and the community board that nothing else will happen without uh, further consultation with the, with, with the board and also with the wider community. Thanks, Stephen. Is there any comments or questions that you would have for, for Stephen? Mary? It's good to get that reassurance, Stephen, and especially at a meeting, because, as you know, we discussed this when we met, and the information we received was there would be no further public consultation to went to planning. So it's to recognise that, you know, this is came on board and that there will be before it goes to planning. <laughs> Thank you. So, Chair, just to give that reassurance, I did say it to a few times, and I've said it before at other meetings we've been at or walkabouts, there will, there will absolutely be, this was consultation on a vision and not on specific sites, although sites were mentioned, and nothing else will happen without further consultation with the community. Thanks for that, Stephen. Any other comments or questions for Stephen on the, the Town Visions update? No, thanks very much for that, Stephen. Uh, if we can go on to agenda item seven, which is the board briefing paper on participatory budgeting, uh, and I've been practicing saying that before. I was going to do PB, but that's Ross that's going to come in there. Ross, thank you very much, Chair. I'm going to do the exact same because I'll say that we're about to talk about participatory budgeting, and I'll be calling it PB from this moment on as well. So everyone should have had sight of the briefing paper that was circulated uh, last week in advance of the board. And I'm just going to talk through it sort of briefly, but just in sort of plain English so everyone's really clear about what the ask is and what we're sort of looking for. So recently at the Council Committee, uh, there's a, been approval of the Council's overall mainstream PV approach, which is council-wide, covers all the services, and specifically for, within our team, the communities team, and working with the community boards, uh, there's now a request for the community boards to set up some form of task and finish group to look at how PB works for you in your local area. So this is about the local communities shaping how the processes will work for them in their own area. That's recognising that one size won't fit all. We're not coming out and telling all community boards how to do this. This will be about the board shaping it so it best suits their own community. Shots board, probably more than most of the other community boards, all have a, a knowledge and an understanding of PB. We ran the sort of the big pilot scheme of a couple of years ago now between Shots and Wishaw. And obviously Shots was very successful through that process. So people understand about PB, about voting, about having your voice and being able to direct how budgets are spent. But it's very important to understand PB isn't a different budget. There's not new money sitting to do this. PB itself is a mechanism for us to decide how to spend money, how do we allocate the resources and you know how do we decide as a group, as a community, as a board, what's the what's going to be the most effective way for us to use the resources we have available? So the the current position you'll have seen in that that just now we bring all projects to the board. So anyone can put forward a project. And we say yes, that's fine. Goes on to a list, and eventually it'll, it'll get delivered. Budgets permitting and feasibility permitting. What PB will allow the board to do is decide how do they prioritise things on the LDP. How do they allocate money maybe for the communities to bid into? And actually, how can they direct the resources to the areas of the community that maybe most need it or are maybe overlooked? So again, the task and finish group or the steering group will look after that. This steering group doesn't need to be a new group. The board can have that discussion. It could be one of the existing subgroups and the board just decide that that subgroup takes on this remit to look at PB and the LDP projects and things as part of the wider work that it undertakes. One thing I do need to point out is that the subgroup it will need to contain a council officer on it for financial governance because these are council budgets that will be getting basically discussed and 
So anyway, I, I thought you were just applauding everything I said. So that's <laughs> uh, so this is council budget. So there will be a council officer on the group, not just for financial governance, but also to provide support around PB about how it works, about the explanations that might be needed, and also to feed in all of the documentation required. The ask isn't for the group to produce the documentation to run PB. It's about them being that local voice and doing it. So the next step really is what we're asking the board to do tonight is approve the setup either of a standalone task reference group to look at PB or to agree that we can get one of the existing light priority subgroups such as community engagement to take that on and then start moving PB forward so that we're in a good position for the start of the next financial year to start rolling it out. So that's all in that chair, but I'm more than happy to take questions on either the paper on or on PB in general, if it would help anyone. Thanks, Ross. Are there any comments on the participatory budget and John Joe? Can I ask you, Ross, see the projects that's not been finished because of COVID over the last two years, are they going to be finished for the one up at Ross Hall Road up at the car park? Uh, that's been lying there like for now two years and there doesn't seem to be any movement. You know the one I'm talking about, the car park is uh, next to the 32 Social Club. I'm not sure what one that is, John Joe. I can so certainly... On the road, all road. Um, oh, right, the, the play I know where you are, where we look to curbs. Yes. You did that. Those, you, those you've projects, put that in. Yeah, those projects will all be completed. The, it's actually the council's team that are doing that, and they're still still under directions that they have to social distance while they're out on site. It needs up to four people to install a single bit of equipment, and they can't do that until their work directions change. So that work, the budget's ring fence for that. That's absolutely going ahead, and all of the other projects that have previously commenced will be completed. You see, the problem I, I, I'm thinking along like these lines, eh, Ross, that's two years down the line. How much more is the equipment going to cost and how is that going to be funded if there's been a, a rise in costs? Won't cost us anything else, John Joe, because we've got it in a storage unit just now. So the, the work had already started. We had all of that in place. And had COVID not hit, that would have been finished a year past the April. So all the materials and things are there. If there's any uplift in costs, we'll be able to absorb that within wider council budgets. <coughs> so it won't impact the shots budget or the delivery programme at all for shots. Thank for that. No problem. Thanks, John Joe. Thanks, Ross. Is there any other comments? Is there any other comments on how to establish a, a suitable reference or task group to take this forward? Maybe you would like some time after, you know, to think about that. And that's something that, you know, you could maybe contact officers with or, you know, we can revisit uh, again. So thanks very much for that, Ross. Thank you. Uh, if we can move forward now, and we've got the board development session from Leanne Pollock, who is the Community Partnership Manager. Danny, can I ask something before we move on? Yeah, sorry, Where's Mary. Yeah, go ahead. Where's the... Where's the? I know you're talking about participatory budgeting. So the LT, LDP projects. There's usually a a section for that. It's, late, it's later on in the agenda, Mary. Was it later on? Right. Okay. Thanks. Yep. It's under item thirteen, it. standing items. Item one. Oh, so it is. So it is. Thanks, Mary. Leanne. Thanks, Chair. Um, Ross is going to share a couple of slides for me because I find it really difficult speaking and trying to share the slides at the same time on WebEx for some reason. Um, too used to Teams these days. Um, so I'm just going to take through a couple of very short slides just by way of an update on where we are with the development programme. It's on the, the agenda as a um, development session, but it's actually a development programme. So you'll be aware that um, over the past kind of few cycles of the meetings, we've been on, we've been undertaking some engagement with the community boards around their development and training kind of needs. 
mainly development needs um, and we did our training needs analysis a few months ago we brought to the last meeting um, an update on the kind of key the key areas of focus that had been highlighted through the training needs analysis and since then um, we've been working with the council's talent and organizational development team to work up how we could develop how we could have um, a development program in place to support community board members to make sure they've got all the information and access to the resources that they require so this these slides just take you through um, where we've got to with that. So if we could just move on to the next slide, Ross, please. So um, just a kind of a, a recap, um, the development phase of the board member development hub is, is underway. Um, what we've been looking at doing is, or what we have been doing is developing an actual hub, an online hub um, through Learn NL. Uh, the hub will bring together all the resources for addressing the outcomes of the training needs analysis to all those areas that were identified through engagement with yourself and across the com community boards across North Lanarkshire. Um, we have started to look at um, how we put information on the hub um, and look at different ways of helping people to, to access that information um, and different kind of resources. So the resources will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week once the, the hubs are up and running um, and it'll be accessible from any device. It'll be delivered in a blended format. So it might be that for certain topics, there'll be information and um, there'll just be like links to information or there'll be briefing papers or presentations or, or kind of fact sheets. For other topics, it might be that we will deliver physical sessions, training sessions. Um, for others, it might be we might develop an online module. It's very much an evolving process, but to start with the process, the 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 the, the kind of agreed process is that what we're going to do is get as much information on the, the hub as possible to help people as quickly as possible. And then as we move forward, we'll develop the delivery mechanisms. Um, if members don't already have login credentials, so some people might have login for it, Learn NL, some won't. If you don't, they will be provided in advance of the, the, the hub being launched. And uh, we will be developing um, virtual introductory sessions to the, the hub. And they'll be offered to all community board members once the hub's up and running to help you to kind of navigate that. Next slide. So um, in terms of the, this, the, the, these slides are really just to show you what it's starting to look like, what the hub's starting to look like for community board members. So the community board um, development hub is it's going to be a designated area on Learn NL. So the council already uses Learn NL for internal development um, and learning kind of approaches um, and elected members, council officers, etc. can access that. But this is going to be a, a specific designated area uh, specific to the needs of community board members. So all the wee tiles that you can see there that they, they there will be um, tiles to align to all of the subjects that were identified through the training needs analysis and if you click on that tile it'll take you into the information on that and resources on that particular topic and um, underneath that the, the, the content will be organized um, in clear kind of subtitles to help you to, to kind of navigate um, and it's the, all of the topic areas have been um, designed to be accessible flexible and tailored Next slide. I think I maybe jumped a bit ahead there actually. So the the slides have the, we've tried to make the the information and the way that the slide the way that the information has been developed as accessible as possible. We've tried to make it flexible so that we can change the content because obviously some of the things, um, some of the topics may be linked to current legislation or current policies etc. So we need to be able to change it and make sure that it's as up to date as possible. And we need to also be able to change the delivery mechanisms and the ways that we put information across. Um. For example, if we get feedback that, that people are finding it difficult to navigate a section of the, the site or the way that we're delivering isn't appropriate, we need to be able to change. And we want to make sure that it's tailored to need. So again, we want to be able to keep checking with the community boards to make sure that the information and the resources available are, are suitable to current need and to be able to make changes as and when required. So um, if you move to the next slide, Ross. This is the last slide you'll be glad to know. So we will continue to develop the hub. Um, internally within the council just in terms of getting the actual um the you know the, the technicalities I suppose up and running. Um the testing of the hub um we will be giving members of the community boards the opportunity to to volunteer to be involved in the testing and what we'll do is uh, that'll probably happen quite soon after Christmas and before the next cycle of community board meetings we'll be looking for volunteers to come along and test. We'll be using the feedback for testers and making any amendments and the plan is that we'll be it launching the hub from April 2022. So I think when we started out in this process, it was very much about right. The community board members are going to need 
probably some support and some training around certain topic areas and around their, you know, making sure that, that we can support them to undertake the role as effectively as possible. I think what we've done is we've tried to broaden that out and make it a bit more dynamic and rather than it just being about, you know, having to turn up to a training session, there'll be a number of ways that people can access information depending on, I suppose, their life, you know, what's going on. They can do it at different times of day depending on what's going on um, or we can do targeted sessions if we feel that there's a need. So that's all I've really got to say and we just wanted to give you an early opportunity to see how that how all that's shaping up based on the, the earlier training needs analysis that you've done and the earlier updates that we have delivered to you. I'm happy to take any questions on that, Chair. Thanks, Leanne. Do we have any questions or comments for Leanne? No, thanks very much. Thank you. If we can move on to agenda item nine, and that's the Allenton Primary School update. And I believe Ross is Penny. going to give us. Oh, sorry. 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 Uh, no, go ahead, Mary. Right. OK. Um, I know somebody was speaking about this and they were asking if you can't access this online. What, what's the alternative? But I know Leanne had said there could be some face to face things. Is that right? Did, yeah, I think the starting point, Mary, is to try and establish somewhere that, that all the information will be available to community board members um, and then to try and look at the best way delivering the best delivery mechanisms to get that information out there. So it might be that some of the information will be will remain online and it might be that we will deliver physical sessions if there's enough demand or there's a need for it. And I think that's the ideal what we need to be constantly assessing this and making sure that it's meeting need. But if there's somebody who genuinely can access online, then Ross and the, the team locally would be more than happy, I'm sure, to, to speak to them and to assist them either to access the information online or to help them to get the information in a different format if that's needed. We certainly wouldn't want to exclude anyone, but I suppose, you know, the way that the meetings are running just now, I think I would assume that community board members are able to access um, online um, resources right now. Um, but if, certainly we would we would not want to put up any barriers. And if there's any way that we can give additional support to people to access information, then the, the, the team will be more than happy to do that. I've just got some points to to say. It's not not really looking for a response as such. Okay, and again, it's this is um, to do with the council in general terms, not community partnership. Okay, so we we can kind of think the training program, um, especially with what's been presented just now, and. Not all the tiles that, that were presented, because some things do need to evolve as time goes on. But we think that there's been a missed um, opportunity uh, there for the council at the beginning of the community board process to engage with community groups and make it a more meaningful interaction than what it's actually been. So rather than a training programme over a year later, um, the points or some of the points um, should have been party discussions and ongoing work with groups, those groups that had shown an interest to join, shape and develop the board from the outset, because basically the groups have not had any part in developing or shaping the board, but it's a community led board. Um, that would obviously assist the joint working to the benefit of the community and also for the council and community groups. Because as today, as we're aware, there has been a lot of conflict, which has been negative and it's not productive. Um, but for a partnership approach, we would have expected community boards to be part of the, the setting up of the board. Um, the council had a responsibility to involve groups, generate the interest, make the book make the board a group that the community would want to be part of and invested in. And as you know, we discussed with you that TS Housing after tonight is leaving the board and that, that still remains. And I don't think you can need to go into any, any of that. Um, so instead of carrying out the initial work, what I've just dis uh, described there, the, the, the council has more or less just went forward straight off taking up from the last community matters or whatever happened in, the, in between and then taking it forward as if 
we were just back to agenda items and etc. Right. I mean, for example, the roles and responsibilities. If you look at the terms of reference, there's a lot of roles and responsibilities within that. That's never been or it's not been discussed that I'm aware of. I'm, I'm conscious that we missed, we weren't at the first meeting, but looking at the minutes, it doesn't look as if there was any great discussion um, like, and roles and responsibilities. And, you know, what groups felt about that? Did they feel that it was within what the group wanted to do? Um, it was just assumed that, that the groups would, would carry out this work. I think it would have been helpful if we'd had a background, and that's something you might want to put into your training on the Communities Act, the work carried out by the Scottish Government Department Democracy Matters, and also the Council's own consultation that Legal and Democratic carried out regarding community engagement. Um, but exclu excluding the groups, basically the board hasn't followed through on community engagement democratic processes that have been identified through the work of Democracy Matters. Um, other things that we felt merit, merited discussion at an earlier stage, as opposed to just now, would have been accountability. Um, the board has full it has accountability to the full community. You know, that's never been discussed what it means, what it means for individual groups what it means within the board. Um, there's been no dis discussed method for the election of community groups to make that representation. And we've already had it said, um, who, who's given groups permission to take votes in my behalf or to speak in my behalf? Nobody's came and asked me if I'm wanting a particular group to, to represent me. Um, Again, we're going to go into the budget um, responsibilities. That's never been discussed. What level of responsibility or accountability the groups want within that? And again, that was is that not councillors' responsibilities to, to look at budget? The voting rights group, um, was that role ever actually discussed with the voting rights group? What it really means for them? Um, are they representing their own group? Are they representing the wider group? And that's also in a general sense. You know, who, even if it was a consensus, is it the wider group? Is it your own group you're representing? Because if it's only your own group, then that's really narrowing the representation down. Um, what methods exist to evidence community feedback? So I think that's quite quite important because people are taking votes, especially the voting rights group, and if it is, it is the wider community, and I would expect it to be the wider community, depending on what has been discussed or voted on, or what method exists to evidence that that is real community feedback. Uh, consensus. Who who Who's actually involved in consensus? Is it just community groups and the elected members? Is a one vote per group to ensure you've got a equal representation? Does it involve members of the public who happen to come on that night? Um, also, with subgroups, is there a core group who actually vote in the subgroup? Uh, at the town vision, we had people join at the last meeting who had never been at any subgroups, but they were involved in the vote to to decide are we going to meet again before the policy and strategy committee. So that, that means that the core people on a subgroup could be there doing the work, carrying out what's to be done, and then when a vote's going to happen, can other people then join it and then they've got a vote? So things like this, it's not necessarily what is in the terms of reference, it is what is not in the terms of reference that actually needs discussed. I'm nearly finished. Other um, issues were uh, breaches of confidentiality. Um, that comes out well, the data protection, right? Uh, so, in the course of carrying out community board work, 
for example, there's a breach of confidentiality, a, a complaint comes in about that. Where does this data protection fall? Because if you're operating as the board and you're carrying out board work, and who deals with the complaint? Where's the complaints process? So things like this, that the basics are still not in place. Health and safety, for example, participatory budgeting. If people, the subgroup decide they're going to go out and promote the participatory budgeting voting process, and as we did last year, 2020, I didn't do it, but other people in the community council did it. They went out and leaflet dropped. And if there's an accident, we know accidents happened. There was a community council up north got taken to court. Somebody broke their neck. So where does health and safety sit? Because you're carrying out work on behalf of the board. So these are issues that we feel are actually all needing discussed and fixed out. Um, so I'm, I'm not speaking on behalf of all the groups who are here, obviously, or all the groups who have been here, but there is a, a kind of general feeling that their council have, a, have looked in groups as being passive recipients, waiting here to get information, to act on what the council says, what, the, what they want you to do. You'll get information when the council's ready to give you it, not before. Um, to, to, we, we, we feel what's happened is not reflective of true partnership working, and that starts at the origin of the community board and how it was set up. And, and we're quite happy to say community partnership has engaged with us. You know, we've, we've done all these things, but the basics, the basic principles of the board have not been discussed. That's me finished that. Thanks, Thanks for that, Mary. It's certainly, certainly a lot of points there to discuss. And uh, Leanne, I, I don't know if you want to come in generally. It might be better, you know, yeah. uh, there's a lot there to deal with. And I, I think it might be good to, you know, offline later, you know, if we can, you know, yeah. back to Mary and cover all those points. But if you want to give a a, a, a response just now, that yeah, would no be problem. fantastic. Can, can I Sorry, Leanne. No, no, Sorry, on you, on you go, John Joe. To be honest, to be honest with you, see uh, that community board up and running. Surely we should have our terms and references in place because we have no guidelines to work to until we get the terms, terms of reference in place. Uh, it's supposed to be a community board, we're supposed to have guideline, guidance. But everything we're getting is coming from the council. Do this, do that. Anyway, the community are having no say. And I feel if we had our terms of reference, the community's terms of reference, not the council's. It's a community, as a community board, we, we are the ones that are driving this. What's it along, alongside the council? But we don't have the say. The council keeps coming to us with this, that, and the other. And we're not getting any say in that process. And I think it's time we were getting a say in that process. And that's one of the reasons. Why I'm leaving the board tonight also, uh, because I don't see any future until we get all these sorted out. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, chair, thanks, chair, I'm happy to come in yep. generally. Okay. Yeah, I'm thanks, happy to come in uh, generally, and, and obviously, you know, Stephen, if you want to chip in or any of the co my colleagues on the, the call, but uh, from, from my perspective, um, I think that the board does have terms of reference and I'm not going to try and go through all of the different points that, that Mary picked up on there because I, I, I think that responses have been given to quite a few of those points and I don't think it is. I think it's too big a discussion to try and get into in this particular forum tonight. I think um, that there are terms of re reference that exist. The community boards were set up um, probably, you know, with, with the right intention, we set them up. That they're part of the, they're not the council, and, and and we need to move away from this idea that it's the council. The 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 they're part of the community planning structures, which mean the the community boards are about working in part 
public sector agencies working in partnership with communities to identify and support delivery of action around their priorities. It's, it's, a, it's not about one agency leading. What I will say is in terms of the, the, the setting up of the boards and the terms of reference, the community planning partnership do, ha do have legislative obligations around supporting local community planning. So there are certain things that we do need to have in place. We do have, in terms of the council, the council does um, administer uh, resources, for example, local development programme um, that we do discuss and that are delivered locally through community boards. Therefore, the council does need to have certain things in those terms of reference that, that meet those basic requirements and that, that, that make sure that the council as an organisation is protected in terms of the financial regulations, etc. But, but my view is very much that the community boards were established at quite a challenging time due, throughout COVID. They're in normal circumstances, if, if, if normal exists, there might have been more going out and physically meeting with individual groups, you know, in advance of the community boards and things like that. We were in transition between the old structure into the new structure that had been approved pre-COVID, and we wanted to give communities a platform at that time to be able to still come together. What I would say is there are terms of reference, there is guidance there through the work to develop this development um, programme. This is a real true attempt to say, let's look at what, what information the community board members need to be able to fulfil their role. Um, and if you feel that's a wee bit later than anticipated, it's certainly later than we probably would have anticipated. But again, it's been it has been quite a challenging year and a lot of things have been put back. So I think for me, it's now about how do we localise this community board? And I'm sure Stephen would, uh, would, would support that. There are things that we need to have in place and there are things that for the council to be able to support this approach, we need to have in place the, the terms of reference and things like that need to, we need to, if we, we're going to support this approach, um, we need to have certain terms of reference and things in place and, and basic kind of checks and balances but for me now it's about why don't we maybe move on and start to think about how locally we can start to shape how this board works how do we start to deliver action for local people so I, I, that is quite a general um, response that I've given there chair but I think there was too much for me to start to go into any more detail than that I think all I would say is and I think Stephen said it earlier on as council officers and I know as other community planning partnership officers for other agencies I think I can quite safely say we are absolutely committed to working with the community in shots and coming out and understanding the local issues and I know that, that certainly our team locally through Ross, Maureen etc know the, the, the groups very well and are out there regularly I know uh, Stephen's been out, I, I'm fairly new to, to covering the shots area uh, professionally so um, I'm kind of getting to know the area as well. What I would say is we're absolutely committed to, to, to looking at local Local action that reflects local need, um, and and to making sure that that the, the community board reflects that. And I would say we need to probably make that that distinction between the work that happens within communities and the terms of reference and the kind of checks and balances around um, the, the operation of a community board, which is really 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 important and why we want to have that development program there. But ultimately, this is about how do we work together to deliver for and with communities. But I don't know if any, Stephen, if you wanted to come in with anything on that, because I know you've been involved in a lot of the local discussion as well. Don't want to put you in the spot either, but... Well, you don't want to put me in the spot. You just put me in the spot, aren't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't want to put you in the spot. <laughs> After what you said, then I agree with. And I suppose I'm disappointed tonight, Mary. You did tell us when we met a couple of weeks ago that was the intention to an extent. But for, for everything we've done, and I'm not saying, oh, we're going out, we've done this to, to stop you or whatever, but it's up to yourselves to make up your own mind where, where you're heading and what you're going to do. But I think for the, for the commitment we have shown, and we have shown a commitment, and we want that commitment is still there. And it, I think we've got to be careful as well, because it's not just to be shots. This it, it invariably ends up coming down to shots, but the ward in general, you've got Hart Hill, you've got Allenton, you've got Morningside and Bonco, which are still part of that ward as well, along with Salisbury. And the commitment's out there for every single part and not just shots. Um, but th there's a there's a commitment there from myself, from Ross, from uh, Maureen uh, and Leanne as well. And that, that commitment, that partnership, I just feel as if I, I accept, I get it in terms of the complaints about the terms of the reference, but we have discussed it and discussed it. We've given, we've given a commitment, we've given feedback. I appreciate you're still not happy and members of the community are still not happy, but Leanne said it herself there. I think what we are saying is, can we not just draw a line under it and move on and start trying to build that? Because I feel as if we are, we're getting to know the community better, we're getting, and other, other people in the community are contacting themselves as well, saying that there's a lot of positives in there. I watched the film, the wee, the wee bit about my kind of town and shots, and 
different people get different views. That's all I'm saying tonight. You know, some people are saying, oh, they're wanting this, they're wanting that. Other people are saying, yeah, they do, but maybe not in that area. Um, but we need to work with everything for the benefit and the best of shots. And all we are saying is, and Leanne said it really, really well there, we are totally committed. Shots is different from Airdrie, from Motherwell, from Wisher. Um, it's a different community. It's got different issues and everything else. I know there's nine community boards and there's a standard terms of reference. We're quite clear, and the Chief Executive has been quite clear with us as well in the meetings we've had, that each of the nine community boards will have different priorities, and obviously there are lots in there as well. But Shots is a community, or sorry, Fortisat in, in general is a community with completely different issues. And that's one of the reasons we did the, the local housing strategy, kind of. We, we, we've done that to the nine um, community boards, but we did a specific one with shots and actually gave you stats and figures. And we're still, we are absolutely intent, we will do that for the other areas of the business. So I feel as if we have came quite a distance in what, I don't know, four months, five months. Uh, and I, we need to keep that momentum going. Um, at the end of the day, it's up to yourselves. If you made the decision years ago and you're going, but all I'm saying just now is the commitment is absolutely from us and the, the wider partners to all work together for the benefit of the wider area. Thanks, Leanne and Stephen. Frank, I see your hand going up, but I, I've got three people probably just in before you. Uh, I okay. think Leslie wants to come in, and then John, Mary would like to reply, and then Frank. So, Leslie, if you want to come forward. Yep. And... Can you hear me okay? Yes, we're, you're yeah, fine. Okay. Um, so, Leanne, just in a response there, reiterated the need for North Lancashire Council to have certain things within the terms of reference. Um, but I think one of Mary's points there was that it's not what's in it, it's about what's missing. Um, so, if you don't know what you don't know, you know, and it's actually been really interesting to and helpful for Mary to share this from her experience um, of working you know, with different groups and with um, NLC over time and allowing the other groups that are here to to consider all of this. Um, I don't think local action is the problem. You know, there's a lot of, of good support there and local action people are ready to, to work for the Fantastic Ward. It's clearly the terms of reference that, that are the problem. And, you know, North Lancashire Council keeps saying they're totally committed, totally committed to working together. Then I think it's act on these concerns around the terms of reference, take it up the chain, and that will show this total commitment. That's all I want to, to add. Thanks, Leslie. I, I think what I'll do is I'll probably, uh, I'll take John, I'll go back to Mary, and then I'll I'll take Frank, and then possibly Leanne or, or, and or Stephen could respond to that. John, do you want to come in there? Thanks. It's just that I, I've had a thing about the terms of reference for about the, the, the past year, uh, and I, I keep getting emails from Ross saying uh, it's still in draft form. And then all of a sudden, it's it's no longer in draft form. It's a fact of life. And this, this is too important to let it go by before it's in it, in my opinion. And I think it needs a lot more discussion. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, John. Mary, do you want to come back in just before Frank? Um, but thanks for your response um, and we do appreciate and acknowledge that legislation does play a part and will need to be incorporated in everything that that's going on within the board because it is a statute you know the council is a statutory body after all uh, what i should maybe have made clear is although we are withdrawing as a group um i mean i will be re-registering to come on as a local person we will still be available to i'm not saying to help with community board activities but we don't want a position whereby if we've got information that could be helpful to the board that we wouldn't be sharing that that's not the intention where where the difference for us in leaving is we will not be part of the voting process we do not want to be part of this voting process the way that it's currently in place um we we we're not confident enough that it's going to be reflective of the community as such. And we don't want people coming back to us saying, why did you vote that way instead of this way? And that, you know, people being unhappy with the outcome of votes. We're a community group. We want to represent the community. We do not want people coming back to us complaining about, you know, something we've potentially voted on. And we think that's that's actually what's going to happen. So that that's that's 
the biggie for us, and that's one of the main reasons that we're leaving is to remove ourselves from that voting process. But we we are available, as I said, we'll be coming on as local people. Um, so we've not lost us. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thanks for that. Frank, you wanted to make comment on this. I did. Uh, I just see the partnership that, that we've got for yourself, Kerry, Stephen, Ross, Maureen, is excellent. I don't see any issues at all. If we need support, we've got it. We can pick up the phone. We can send an email. And I'm fairly new to the board, but I've never experienced any issues that were being led by the council. Actually, the opposite itself, but we see that we're actually leading and we're asking for support and we're getting that support. Thanks, Frank. Leanne yeah. or Stephen, do you want to come back in? Do you want to come back in on that? Sorry, Mary, I'll, I'll come back to you. Mary, did you want to come back in? I see your hand no. still up. It it's not all right, sorry. It's not about um not being able to lift the phone or speak to somebody or get that support. Um that ha that happens. Uh, I definitely have no criticisms of that. And as I said, everybody came out and we went to walk about. It's the development and the shaping of this this board and the exclusion of group members and as part of the decision making of what's actually happening with the board as opposed to, you know, because what's happening is we're getting information, we're being told this is what's happening, this is how it's going to be. Whereas we feel as the community, and if it's a community led board, we should actually be part of that ongoing discussion to shape it. So it's not about community partnership not showing support to us. That's that, that that's not the issue at all. We would never say that community partnership haven't been supportive to have. Thanks, Mary. Francis, can we come to you and then I'll, I'll go to John, come back to John again. Yeah, can I just say as well that I, I do agree with Mary. Um, I feel sometimes it is very one-sided, I will be quite honest with you. Um, and again, for all we're raising concerns, I do totally agree that, yeah, we're raising concerns about the terms of reference. We're not sure where we stand sometimes. It's a big community out there. You've got a few people here to take everything that you want out to that community, which is mission impossible at times. And it's hard for us to represent them when we're telling you, look, we're struggling a wee bit. Can you give us help? And that's what we're asking. And I know Leslie's reiterated that too. Can you give us help? Can you take us up above? Because, Frankie, I know you feel everything's going fine. I, I, I'm going to be honest, I'm struggling a wee bit at times as well. And I feel it's one sided. I'm a late person. I'm giving up my time. I want to help as much as I can. But I feel at times when we're telling you that we're struggling, we don't know this, we don't know how to do this, we feel awkward with this, you aren't listening and you mm -hmm. aren't prepared then to take our problems on board and actually see it from our point of view. And it's not personal criticisms to anybody. I just feel this board should work a lot more with sincerity and a bit more trust in there as well. And I feel it's the basics that aren't there. And I just, I just, I, I would like to say is I feel the same way as Mary. I'll be perfectly honest, and that's sad. And I, I feel it's more reiterated now because again the problem's been brought to you, and you aren't just sitting down saying, "Look, okay, we're we're taking on how you're feeling. How can we work around this?" It's kind of been swept under the carpet a wee bit. As much as I appreciate the work everybody does, but I don't think we're quite dealing with the problem that we as community board members are bringing to yourselves to support and help us to deal with so we can work better within this community. Thanks for that, Francis. I'm going to go to John and then I'll go, go to Leanne. To, are you okay, John? Okay, I'll go to Leanne who wants to respond and then Stephen as well. Leanne. I suppose again, it was just to. It's not that we, do, we absolutely are clear on on the issues that have been raised. I think, for me though, I think the the level of detail that Mary had gone into there with the, the types of things that she feel that that people feel need to be outlined. I'm not sure that that you would be able to capture that in in a, in a terms of reference. I think absolutely take on board what you're saying but I think there is an opportunity now that we've got this development program there's an opportunity now for me 
for the community boards to say, right, these are the things that we maybe think do need a bit tightening up a bit for our area, or these are the things that we think that, you know, could look slightly different. And for me, it's almost now saying, right, the boards are up and running. And, you know, I know it's been a wee while since they've been up and running, but it's still quite early days, given that, you know, we've had so many restrictions and things. So for me, it's about now, the community boards are almost like in a blank canvas now for each area to say, right, they're up and running. Let's look at how we make it work for each area. There are core parts of the terms of reference and things that, that we as an organisation and other partner agencies have signed up to that we would not be able to change. But if there are bits there that you think, right, we maybe need something supplementary to, you know, to, to outline exactly how that might work and, you know, if it's about the, the PB subgroups or whatever. I think it's very difficult to have that one size fits all in a set of terms of reference for nine community boards and covering all the like priorities. I think the reality is that we need to take into consideration each of the individual uh, priorities for a community board or the matters that, are, that, are, that arise and whether it's a subgroup or whether it's you know an action plan or whatever. Um, we need to then can assess right what, what would we need to put in place to, to, to around decision making? How does that link to the main body of the board, etc.? And for me, I think I am concerned that people are saying they feel worried that you know the council or and other partners are, are expecting the, the the community board members to come along and and you know to be the absolute voice of the whole community. I don't think there is any expectation around that. I think we want the community boards to be as representative as they possibly can be, and I think we want those who are able to take a vote and we would never want to get to the position of having to take a vote because generally you know we would hope that we would be able to reach decisions through consensus but if uh, we, we absolutely want uh, these organizations that, that are representing communities or say they're representing communities to be as representative as possible but actually the work to, to engage with communities and the accountability with the board sits out with the community and it sits out with in terms of the work that's already happening within communities, the work of the sub the the, the subgroups that support the the light priorities, the work that that, that Ross and Maureen and, and other officers um, are doing in the locality on a day-to-day -day basis, where people are just picking up the phone and talking to them and saying, you know, we've got an idea, can we do a bit of engagement out here? Can you support us to access some funding to do this, that, there? That's where you're engaging the community. And the role of the people here is really just about being able to represent that if they possibly can and they have that information if they've been involved in some of that engagement activity but also to, to listen and, and to be open to being held to account in terms of being able to say okay you might be saying that but actually there's been this engagement taking place with particular groups of people and they've told us this so at, so it's about it's just about dialogue and discussion and is, is moving forward positively together and I don't see any reason why um, and, and Ross or Stephen might disagree with me I think the terms of reference are there to, to protect a number of, of partner agencies, um, including the community. But I don't think they're ever going to be as as wide ranging as, as some of the topics that Mary had had raised there. But I think what there is is an opportunity, potentially through the, the training, the development program, or potentially just through the work that we're doing through the LIPE subgroups to say, how's that going to work? We maybe need to tighten that up a bit and then bring it to the community board for that further discussion. So, sorry, I probably said a bit more there th th than I meant to, but just reiterate that point that we're here to work with you and it's absolutely not about, we, we, don't, we do not want to come across as being one-sided. And I suppose the only other thing that I would say is in terms of taking things up the tree, this approach has absolutely got the support of our leadership and the fact that Stephen, one of your heads of service, is sitting here at every community board meeting and is out um, at, at walkabouts and things, I think absolutely tells you the commitment of the council as an organisation and there's work ongoing with the community planning partnership to look at um, how we strengthen the partnership structures that support the community boards and the LIPs and things at a locality level. So there, there is absolute commitment at a very, very high level. Our chief executive is very supportive of, of this approach and is very support of as Stephen said of us making it work for each individual community so yeah we've got the boards established we've got the basic terms of reference now make it work for shots and other areas because they're all very different so that was all I was that was all I was wanting to say I said more than I meant I to say there but I appreciate what you're saying I definitely appreciate that Leanne but seeing both of you saying that I need to come back to you and say yeah I don't feel it is working perfect and I know you're saying you get your leaders people up there but as a member of Shorts Community Board I'm saying to you I don't think it is working as well as the picture you're painting it to be. Uh, sorry if I could just come back on that one point I don't think I'm in any way trying to paint a picture I think what we're absolutely saying is we've done early work we've put some building blocks in, in place now let's make it work for each area 
it's, by, it's far from perfect, and we know that. But how do we do that? I don't think that it's working, and we need to build more on it. And I'm asking for support from you as well for this, and just realisation that we need to deal with things here and see what all the problems are. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and happy to take views on, on, on how we do that. I know Stephen's wanting in as well. Thanks, Francis. Yeah, thanks, Francis, and thanks, Leanne, and and John Joe as well. So, John Joe, come to you just after I go to Stephen. So maybe that's something that could be further discussed offline about about how that goes forward. Stephen, do you want to come in there? Yeah, just to build on what Leanne and Francis have said there. I don't think there's any doubt. It's a bit consensus. We don't really want to go to votes. We've got to go to your votes. Go to go to your vote. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think overall we don't want to get in the position where you're splitting and some half are happy, half unhappy at certain things. We do want to actually have consensus. I've got to say, Francis, I'm disappointed and I'm going to take a wee bit of issue with some of the things you said. And it's not personal and I'm not taking it personal. I don't want people to think I am. But you said a few strong words here that lack of sincerity and a lack of trust and that we're no listening and we're unhelpful. That, that's four words and they're really strong words. And I'm not taking it personal if people think I am. But I think um, each of the words for myself and Ross and, and other, other council officers, because um, I work with council officers every single day, and, and people, despite what maybe some people think, people are committed to delivering services. Good, bad at times. I get it. We, we don't always get it right. Of course we don't. Um, but we are absolutely committed to the community. Um, and the consensus bit is absolutely key. We are listening, but we can't always do what you want either. And that's where that's where coming on to the sincerity and the trust. There's, I've already been out and done walk about and said I can't always say yes. It's impossible always to say yes. But we will give you reasons why we can't say yes. We'll say, well, here's why we can't. But as Leanne said, this is really early in this process just now. If we were two or three years down the road and, and we were sitting here, I would get it because you're like, well, three years, what have you done? But we're at a really early, early period in this. And I was feeling as if we were beginning to get some degree and element of trust. I worked, worked with John Duffy, who, who is a tenant of the council for the best part of the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, John, probably in terms of our tenant participation strategy. And that trust and everything else is there. And John will tell you, I don't always say yes to him when I meet when I meet the Federation of Tenants Federation across North Lanarkshire, because it's not possible, but I'll explain why they can't. But they influence our allocation policies, they influence, influence a number of our policies. And that's what these boards are designed to do across the partners as well. So, as I say, I, I don't want to feel as if I'm being overly defensive, but I just think that some of the language used there about, uh, uh, my opinion is, people are sincere. You've got to build trust. I don't think there's any doubt. I, I can't say we've got the trust now because we need to build trust. But there's definitely sincerity. There's de definitely a will. And we are definitely listening. Um, and I do think unhelpful was said there as well. And as I say, at, at the end of the day, we might not always got it right, but we will go do it. We absolutely can to help. I understand that, Stephen. Can I just say the sincerity was coming from my point of view? Because how can I come to a meeting and be sincere when I don't quite understand? But things in it, some of the some of the jargon as well tonight, I, I can struggle to understand it all as well. So we're talking about sincerity coming from my side as well, and trust coming from my side when I don't quite understand exactly what the jargon is all about. And I'm not going to I'm not going to take back anything that I said. I'm always going to come to a meeting. I'm always going to be honest. But the sincerity was coming from my point of view, Stephen, not aimed at you or accusing people of. I can't come here and be sincere when I feel I can't do things that you're asking of me. When I feel that I don't quite understand everything that's been said, and I can't put my hand up at every bit of jargon and say, "Well, I don't know that." And I've already spoke to you about this as well, Stephen. I'm not a, a North Lanarkshire worker. I'm not. You're all used to these jargons, these words, day in, day out. I'm not. So the lack of sincerity comes from me, and the trust comes from me as well, because I don't understand what you're saying at these meetings sometimes. And I do think it needs to come down to our level a wee bit and not just be taken for granted that we understand all this. So I'm not going to take back anything I said, Stephen, because I'm 100% sincere in what I'm saying, but sincerity comes from somebody who feels... This about this what you're giving me to do. I'm taking votes for a lot of people in shots and saying things for a lot of people in shots because I can't put my hand up and say honestly that I'm able to do that because I'm not. We're all working, we're all busy, there's restrictions with COVID, council aren't meeting face to face. How can I go out there and talk to people face to face when we're all still worrying about COVID as well when the council workers can't do that? And I agree so and accept, and I I accept that, Francis. 
And all I'm saying is we need to, we do need to move forward. We need to start building. And I thought we had started building a degree of trust. That takes time. That's all I'm saying. That that does take time. And the commitment from our side is that we are absolutely committed to doing that. That's all I'm saying again. And again, I'm bringing to you that there's a problem perhaps here, but we still need to deal with things at this level as well. And we need to deal with them still by a good, solid community board. I agree. Thanks, everybody. We've had a good discussion on this, but I'd like to finish up with, I'd like to go to John, Joe, and then Ross wanted in as well. And then I'm cognizant of the time, and I'd like to move on to the next agenda item. John, Joe. I'm quite a bit confused here, because Leanne and uh, are saying the term and uh, reference have been agreed, but Church Community Board have got no input into the terms of reference. I've never been asked to put input into the terms of reference. So how can they be passed? Can you tell me how and where they were passed? Because it wasn't at this level. It must have been turned up above without our knowledge or without our input into the terms of reference. Thanks, John Joe. Ross, you want to come in at that point? Uh, just very quickly for Francis, it was just to make the offer, Francis. I've had calls with other members of the board to try and get through terminology and just in plain English ways. We do try and simplify documents as much as we can. Totally get sometimes there's abbreviations and what do we use? I have had that call with other board members, and if it would help, I'm more than happy to go through the language you use, the processes just explain all the different things if you would find that helpful at all i'm more than happy to do that anytime that thanks Ross. thank you thanks everybody that was a really good discussion on, on that agenda point if we can move on to agenda item nine now and, and that's ross is going to give us an update on allenton primary thanks ross i don't get an answer to my question sorry john joe <laughs> i'm happy to to, to come in and, and answer that. Ross will be able to come in around the specifics of, of the detail of how, how things were circulated in, in shots if people have got particular answers. But um, the terms of reference, as far as I'm aware, were shared with all of the community boards on several occasions asking for feedback. And based on the feedback, the final terms of reference um, were approved um, and they were approved through the Council's um, Community Empowerment Committee and the North Lancashire Partnership um, Board. Strategic Leadership Board, um, which is the Community Planning Partnership for North Lanarkshire, because they need to meet the requirements of um, the statutory requirements that, that are associated with, with local community planning um, and, and, and in terms of the council's needs. But they certainly were adopted um, and circulated on several occasions to the community boards asking fee for feedback, um, and the, the documents were, were approved uh, thereafter. Well, they were, they were actually approved in advance. The, the, the detail of the, the documents uh, were the, the actual documents, the terms of reference were approved um, in principle through the, the Community Empowerment Committee and the North Lanarkshire Partnership, um, and they were then circulated to the community boards um, for comment and discussion, um, and were, were approved, were adopted on that basis, on the basis of the feedback that came, and, and some changes were made to, to some of the terminology and things used uh, within the documents, Within the document, um, but the, the kind of essence of them didn't necessarily change because they had already been approved, and it was always we felt made clear that, that they had been approved by the the committee and the North Lanarkshire Partnership, and that they were being circulated for comment, and that there was subsequently then some um, changes made in terms of the the, the language and the, the terminology used. But Ross, I don't know if you wanted to come in on anything specific but, around that. I'll be honest. I'll just a minute, Ross, please. Uh, we are still discussing the terms of reference. We have now not made any reference to go up to the other committee. We, are, we still are, I've never passed them. I've never endorsed them. Not once in this community board have we endorsed them. In fact, they've been on our agenda for the last three meetings. It's never been endorsed at this com uh, community board. So I don't know how they, you can say it's went upstairs. But it's never been uh, passed. I've never had think, consensus on that. Yeah, I'm not massively wanting to jump in on this one, Leanne, but I will, I suppose, just say the terms of reference have, the terms of reference were agreed, as Leanne said, by committee and by the North Lanarkshire Partnership Board. The terms of reference, and I suppose the bluntest way to put it, it wasn't up to Shorts Board to decide if they were going to approve them or not to be the terms of reference. They were circulated from the first community board meeting as a standing item, I think, for 
Off the top of my head, I think it was for four or five meetings, so a full annual cycle. Comments that came in were taken on board. Again, just being totally honest with you, the only feedback we really got from shots was around the voting part of it. We got complaints that that was getting put into the LOIC document. We took that on board. We took it out of the LOIC document, so it no longer appears in the LOIC documents. But what's been made clear is the voting structure that's there, that's through our statutory requirements. That's why there's certain organisations in that there. So that was never changing. But I suppose the terms of reference, and it was getting a bit confused, people talking about the votes tonight. Across the community board structure, there's nine community boards. I think we're in about cycle six or seven. So we're probably upwards of 60 community board meetings across North Lanarkshire. There has not been a vote yet. So the vote is a last resort if we can't come to consensus. And consensus should be based on what the data, what the facts, and what the community engagement tells us. So that's where it comes to the discussion. So realistically, for the things that we're talking about and dealing with at a community level, it should never have to resort to a vote. But as far as the terms of reference go, that was closed off at a certain point. But all the comments were taken in. If the amendments weren't made to that document, the comments have been recorded for report to a future committee. So I can guarantee you, John, they've not just been discounted. Everything has been noted down for future reporting purposes. Thanks, Ross. Thank you for that. If we can, if we can move on now, that that would be great. I'd like to move on to agenda item nine, which is the report from Ross on Allenton Primary School. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, Chair. It's actually it's not a report. It's just a quick update. I'd received a couple of inquiries around Allenton Primary School, and the the board are probably aware that the kids are decanted out of the school just now for works. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what everyone's heard, but I think there's maybe been. I don't know, local rumours or things about the reasons for this. What we'll do is I'm just going to share just now, the council have set up a dedicated page on their website that's got frequently asked questions on it. And it's also providing regular updates on either a daily or weekly basis as work progresses. It explains exactly what the nature of the works are, why they're having to be undertaken, what the mitigation measures are, so why the kids have been moved out, how they're getting transported and everything. And I've been assured that the web page that I've popped the link in there, and I'm also happy to circulate to the board after this meeting, that will continue to be updated right through the entire kind of remedial work process. So I would encourage anyone that's got an interest either now to primary of what's happening around the building, have a look at the website. Anything they're not clear on, let me know. But I will share this after the meeting with everyone if that would be helpful, Chair. Thanks, Ross. Any comments on Allenton Primary? Or any questions on the process? I think Kenny, I, I, I've got my hand up, Kenny. Sorry, it's Leslie. Nice. Yeah, okay. go, go ahead. Um, and I just I've got a few things to add here. And although I'm on the community board tonight to represent the Ben Harn Kirk Road group, um, because I'm the secretary for that group, my comments at the moment around at Allenton Primary are not as as that. I'm commenting as a local resident and a parent of a child who attends Allenton Primary. So I was one of the people that had asked Ross to put this on the agenda for this evening. Um, so I've got a couple of questions that I appreciate won't necessarily be able to be answered here tonight, but perhaps Ross, you could go back and and find out a wee bit more information, or Kenny, you might might know. Um, but I had submitted a freedom of information request um, regarding the situation at Allenton and how it led to such a quick kind of decant for the children. Um, and in that freedom of information request, it was indicated that the the concern with the wall so there's a, a concern that there was concern I raised around the condition of one of the walls and that was first inspected in the 9th of November 2020 so last year and a decision was made at that stage to monitor it so one of my questions is can somebody come back to me with information on what monitor actually means you know what does what's the frequency you know what 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 was the kind of real outcome rather than just monitor and um, what further steps would be taken and in what time frame and um, because the next inspection didn't actually take place until September this year and it wasn't part of the monitor process it was done as a result of an external request and that it's that inspection that happened in September this year that then led on to the position that we're now in which was a last minute distressing decant for children and potentially staff as well so you know i do have concerns about you know where we would be now if 
a, a earlier inspection had been made or depending on what that monitor means, I suppose that's the first sort of piece of information that I would I'd like somebody to go back and investigate for me. Um, I've also been told through, through the Freedom of Information request, and it is also, I think, on the website, Ross, that you've, you've posted up as well, that the building you know, wasn't unsafe. There was no risk to, to the children. Um, which is great, you know, obviously we want our children and, and staff as well to be safe. But if that is the case, my next question is, why was there an urgency to decant the, the, the school with no plan? So parents got a phone call during the October school week and told the children wouldn't be back in. They were being decanted from that following Monday. So it was a decant to call their head high on the Monday and then across to Dyke Head Primary. So if there was no risk, you know, what was the urgency? Why could the children not have went back into the Allenton Primary Building for a week, two weeks to have a more planned, methodical decant where children could be prepared and, and staff as well, you know, because staff were on their, their holidays and obviously having to, to set up classrooms elsewhere. So I don't know, um, Kenny, if you've got any other sort of information on any of that or Ross, if you can perhaps take it back. I think just before the chair comes back in, Leslie, sorry, just to confirm, have you got a a freedom of information request in just now that's outstanding or that you've had no i've had it back it came back last week right. right it's okay it's just so that i'm not kind of overset the process i can certainly i'll check the website to see if what they've put on now addresses any of these questions i'm not sure i don't if think not, it I does can take it, i can take it back i'm certainly not in a position to give uh, a council position on that just now but i'll certainly mm -hmm. look into it for you i've no issue with that thank you leslie the the councillors i don't know what leading up to that, you know, in the process you're talking about, but certainly the councillors were contacted at the same time during the October break, uh, and they said to us it was safety first, and they didn't want to take any risk, and that's why the children were being decanted, and that's what was put to us at that point. And, of course, happy with that, that they were taking this approach that safety first, and they wanted to decant the children. But I don't know what led up to that, so maybe through the FOI or, or through Ross, you might be able to get more information. What I can tell you is that the councillors have, have been working, and I've been down there because there are issues subsequently, you know, uh, that the parent council have asked for certain things, and we've had issues with the buses turning and, you know, parents parking there and they're making it difficult. So we've had safety issues there. Uh, so we've been dealing with that with the education department. But certainly, you know, uh, that's been the parent council and that's been Moira and Colin. Uh, but I can certainly, if you don't know about what's been happening with that, I can let you know. Mm -hmm. And I agree, safety first, absolutely. I wouldn't want anybody at risk. But, and that was my understanding as well, that we were being decanted for safety. But actually, the Freedom of Information request says at no point was it, was it unsafe or was there a risk. So I suppose getting that com that information back has then led me to, to ask that question. I didn't actually raise it myself with the councillors because I am um, you know, don't consistently get replies when I email the councillors. Um, sometimes I've got to prompt for a reply and then, you know, or or just kind of give up on an issue because there's not a response. So um, that's why I tend to to just go with a freedom of information request myself and, and get that information back straight from NLC. Sure. Thanks, Leslie. Is there anyone else would like to comment on Allenton? No, thank you. So if we can move on to agenda item 10, which is the request to form a housing and infrastructure subgroup, and that's John Duffy. John. Unmute myself. Fine, thanks, Chair. It's just that um, the Tenants Association had had a meeting with the uh, Keep Moat, the builders of the Spring Hill project, and I thought we had problems till I listened to their problems. And anyway, we, we had a very constructive meeting between the, the builders and some people in the community. And uh, I asked the person, a man called Jim Dobby, who seems to be the, the manager in charge up there, and says, if we were able to have um, a sort of housing a subgroup looking at the infrastructure and all the housing that's happening in, in shorts, would be, he be able to join us? He said he would be delighted and other developers would be delighted. So I sent Ross a copy of the Glasgow one. Glasgow are inviting applications for three capacity building programs on, on Glasgow. So what I'm saying is 
If Glasgow is able to do that, then I think perhaps we should look at it. I thought Keaton Moat was just a, a small organisation, but I was watching Doncaster Rovers, the football team in England last week, and their stadium is named after Keep Moat Stadium, Doncaster Rovers. You know, So they're a big organisation. They're willing to cooperate. I see a need for the tenants in here to get involved so that we can all march forward together and ask if you would consider setting up a subgroup on housing and infrastructure. Thanks, Chair. Ross, would you would you like to respond to, to John? I'll come in first and then I think, I don't know if Leanne or Stephen want to come in as well. I suppose, John, on, on the topic of a subgroup, that's going to be a community board decision. What I would probably say to the board from our side is, housing or infrastructure wasn't identified as a standalone like priority that the board agreed and we've tried to set up subgroup or we have set up subgroups under each of those identified priorities i previously suggested perhaps housing and infrastructure could sit under a town subgroup so that we're not creating another group because that town's group is looking not only at hubs and the visions but also things like business improvement districts and things that relate to the wider town so that that is one suggestion um, it would be up to the board to look at how that's forward, but what I would probably suggest is before a group's forum, somebody's going to have to sit and think, right, what, what is the purpose of that group? What would it hope to achieve? What is it going to feed into the board? I need to be very, very clear, neither the community board nor any subgroup will have any part of the planning process. So there's no, there's no structure we can set up that would become a consultee of the planning process. So... <clears throat> any housing or infrastructure subgroup wouldn't be part of that. And if it was to engage with developers, I think we would really need to have an understanding of how does that support sort of the shorts board work and, and the wider community? What would that group be looking to, I suppose, ultimately achieve and deliver? So that, that would, from my point of view, be where I'd be looking at it. How does it support the LOIPs? Can it fit into an existing structure, whether that's a subgroup or another organisation that exists in shots, and what would the subgroup want to achieve? So I suppose I would pass it back, whether Leanne or Steve wants to come in, or I would pass it back to the board to have that, I suppose, discussion and maybe suggest that interested people go in and then have a look at, right, what what would this actually mean and what would it come to? So trying to be that kind of neutral, this is where I think it sits and, and give my, my support as a council officer to how I think this could move forward. I see Ma Mary's got her hand up. John, would you like to come in? Would you like to respond back to Ross before I bring Mary in? No, it's just that if Glasgow can go ahead with these things, you know, I think they, they're, they're talking about as part of the trailblazing engage influence in the change project. This is the city of Glasgow and they're asking for four groups to be set up in the city of Glasgow. And what I'm saying is, if Glasgow can do that, we could be ahead of them. Thank I, you. I, I completely agree. I think it's the Tenants Information Service in Glasgow that's doing that, to, John, from the, the links you yes. sent me through. I sent you a copy. Yeah. Yep. And I will have a look at it. Um, the reason that they, one of the reasons they are doing these things is they don't have community board structures. They don't have places for people to feed in and identify priorities. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, um, but they're looking at specifically housing-based organisations. So what they're doing is probably what our tenants participation service does within North Lanarkshire. They're looking at a model because Glasgow didn't really have that before. But I'm still going to have a proper read of the programmes, so I'm not saying it's not appropriate, but I think okay. in North Lanarkshire, we already do that at a tenants and housing level. And I suppose, how do we, how do we take the next step? Okay, yep. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, John. Mary, would you like to come in there? So this is the same conversation that has been on for a number of community board meetings and it never progresses. My suggestion would be that members are emailed out, they're invited to attend a meeting, um, obviously to discuss housing and infrastructure issues at that group, at that meeting. Members would decide, is there a purpose? What's the objective? What could be our outcomes? What are the issues? Because we're not getting anywhere with this discussion. 
you know, and infrastructure. It's not just shots. And see, when I speak of shots, I'm not necessarily just talking <coughs> about shots where I stay. I know we're part of Tissot, but it is widely known that North Lanarkshire is very dissatisfied with the level of house building that's going on and the impact that it is having on infrastructure. And I think, you know, when you come out, and I know, Ross, when you were out before, you saw the traffic in Trabothy Road. I think that message is now getting across about the lack of infrastructure. We've got no capacity to increase road surface, but the house building continues. So this isn't just specific to Shorts. This is a complaint throughout North Lanarkshire. And this is an example of where communities keep raising something and we're feeling it's just getting bounced back to us. So my suggestion would be you invite the invite out to members who would want to get together to discuss, is there a need for this group? How could it feed into terms of reference or whatever or whatever issues? And can you identify a purpose, objectives, et cetera, et cetera? Because this conversation just stays the same, never changes. So that's that's my suggestion. Thanks, Mary. Can I bring in Stephen's got his hand up and then Leanne and then Ray's got her hand up as well. So if I can bring Stephen in there. Thanks, Stephen. I, I actually agree with Mary. Um, do you believe that, Mary? I actually agree with you there. Um, but yeah, everything that's said there, is there a I'm need? Gonna, I'm going to start singing now. I'm going to start <laughs> singing. <laughs> uh, I don't agree. Well, are you a good singer? It depends if you want to sing or one song. But yeah. Um, yeah, just exactly what you said there. That you took the words right out of my mouth, probably actually, in terms of what is the need, what's the terms of reference, what's the purpose, what's the objectives. These are the kind of things that that, that we need. Um the, the offer I can give, um, because Ross quite clearly said there in terms of the TP strategy, we have subgroups within the Tenant and Residence Federation across North Lanarkshire, which sits under myself. We do have subgroups as a road subgroup, as you probably know, John. There's a reprovisioning subgroup, and that what reprovisioning is the demolition of the tower blocks across North Lanarkshire and also flats, and the reprovisioning when we're building new houses on the the areas. Um, and I think there's a third subgroup, subgroup, John, but it's been right out of my head tonight. Um, so I would be quite happy for my T, the T, the mm -hmm. dissipation team, to yeah, actually lead, lead on a piece of work there, and for that to sit there. It's a decision of community board, though, whether it goes there or whether it stays here. But in terms of what Ross said, it's the ten the tenants in Glasgow or the tenants uh, Tis in Glasgow, then we have a similar thing here. Um and it's not outsourced, it actually sits with council officers who are expert in that that field in terms of TP and John already works with them. So all I'm saying just now, um it can stay with the community board, it can go there, and even if it goes under under that that banner, it can still be reported back to the board anyway. So I'm just saying you have got another option, that's all. Thanks, Stephen. Can we go to Leanne next and then we'll go to Ray after that? I'll be very brief because probably some of the things that, that Stephen and, and Ross have already said, um, I'll, I'll reflect. But I suppose um, I think the what Stephen's offering up there for that discussion to take place would be really useful. And I think for it to be led by the tenant participation team would be really useful as well. I think, as Stephen says, I think... Um, they, they are experts in this area. There is already a, a, a lot of work going on, and I would be a wee bit concerned about something being developed through the community. It's not our decision, absolutely not, but something being developed through the community board that maybe would create any kind of duplication, or I think that it would make sense that it came from there, and then there was a decision later, as Stephen says, about how that would report into the community board on a regular basis, um, and that doesn't necessarily need to just be in shots. I suppose in terms of, I think you're absolutely right, Stephen, it needs to be about the community board deciding how they want to take this forward, but I would also take you back to the the the, the, the extensive process that we went through to develop the local outcome improvement plan or the LOIP priorities, um, and that, that was based on wider engagement than just the people who come along to the community boards. So I would say if we if as part of the community board there was a, a desire to create any kind of a additional priority or subgroup we would need to do a bit of wider engagement because we would need to because the you know ultimately the, the priorities that were agreed through the community board were agreed based on wider community engagement in shorts the shorts area and we took on board the views um of a, a you know 
a range of different people um, and the, the priorities are for the area of shots. The community board yeah, has got oversight um, and, and accountability around making sure that, that those priorities are delivered upon with, with officers. But um, ultimately we would need to we would need to just be careful that we weren't kind of creating priorities that hadn't been hadn't come out of that kind of wider engagement. And I'm not suggesting that housing, I'm absolutely certain that housing would have been identified at some point throughout that process. But what I'm saying is there was a process to go through and look at the engagement, to look at the data, to you know, it was an extensive process to reach the point where we had agree agreement on what the priorities are. So I would just be a wee bit cautious about how we, how we dealt with that. For me, the the suggestion that Stephen's put forward um, makes makes some sense, but it's certainly not our, our uh, decision to make. But I think just to think about that, if it was going to be a part of the community board, you would need to think about how you would get that wider um, community buy in and, and support for that piece of work to make sure that it was uh, we, were, we were going through the same processes we went through for the other priorities. That was all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thanks, Leanne. Ray, do you want to come in now? Yeah, yeah. Um, there is some concerns across um, Partisip with the infrastructure, as we all know, and there's concerns about the current building that's going on and any future building that may happen. I saw on social media this week there's concerns at Springhoff Barham um, because of the level of dirt and muck that's on the road. Um, now, that's a dark, dangerous road, as we know, coming into shots from the Fault House area. Um, winter's here. Um, frosty, bad weather's coming, and people think that's an accident waiting to happen. So that's a big concern that I think needs to be addressed for the infrastructure and the building that's current at the minute, and also um, the current building that's going on into Bothy, um, having going walks up there, and I've raised this before, about open pits, and it's not closed off. Kids go over and play, that's also a concern. So these things are really important from a safety perspective, and I think they need to be addressed. Thanks for that, Ray. Leanne, I see you've still got your hand up. Did you want to come back in or no? Hey, thanks for that. Thanks, everybody, for that. Uh, if we can go now to agenda item 11, and that's an update on the budget listening event, and that's Leanne who's going to provide that. Um, I think, I mean, I'm happy to introduce it, but I know Stephen probably did more of the, the, the kind of input at the session so we'll, we'll do a bit of a double act but it was just really to uh, provide an update to say that the the listening events have um had taken place um and the one in shots took place um and we had circulated information um on the the, the kind of feedback that came out of that session um and we were really just um i suppose wanting to highlight the, the, the key things that came out, uh, but also we wanted to highlight that that was one part of a wider budget engagement kind of um, approach where we we did also hold um, targeted sessions with young people. So 68 young people participated in sessions um, specifically targeted to, to them. Um, and there was a whole range of different young people for different um, groups were represented. Um, around 500 people completed the, the online survey um, and across North Lanarkshire, 119 people participated in, in the sessions. There was 14 present for shots. I'm not going to go through the detail of what was discussed, um, but the information has been shared uh, with you in terms of the, the key points that were raised there. Um, that was all I really wanted to, to, to say, it was just to highlight that the session had taken place um, and that, that that was the feedback that we had received. And the next stage is that that will now be fed in through the, the, the budget setting process. So that will be used to brief the elected members in advance of them um, taking any decisions. Thanks, Leanne. Stephen, was there anything you wished to, to add to that? Yeah, just very briefly, I'm conscious of time for people as well. Um, the kind of main areas, you've got them in your pack anyway, with the, the agenda pack that was sent out. Um, the, the areas that the community value most was maintenance of green space, uh, which we spoke about at length at, here and in other meetings, uh, and also the leisure centre and any support as well to the voluntary sector. Priorities were health and social care, along with environmental ser services, refuse, bin collection, and services that could potentially be stopped. Um, was discussed at that meeting with school transport. Um, it was quite strong views in terms of um, children walking to school, but being safe, um, and the, the, the benefits that has in terms of health and well-being. Uh, and also, just having a look at the non-statutory elements, the council continued to deliver some non-statutory. Uh, I think some people were surprised when we said some of some of these services that are actually non-statutory, and we were asked to look at what statutory and non-statutory, and, and possibly put some of that information on the website. 
because it probably surprised people the kind of the services that are delivered by the council that are non-statutory. Letter picking, for instance, is a non-statutory service, um, but it's one of the areas that that, that people are obviously um, always uh, have a priority for. So that's pretty much it. Leanne said in terms of the overall numbers, it did go to the nine community boards. There was nine other nine sessions across the nine boards, and uh, a further report will be presented at some point. Thanks, Stephen. I think that, yeah, I think it always surprises people with what's statutory and non-statutory for a council. And I think, you know, if that information got out, you know, that would be fantastic because I say it is always a, a surprise. Is, does anyone like to co would like to comment on, on that agenda item? No, thank you very much. If we can move on to agenda item 12, uh, and we have two petitions here. One is Vicks Park petition and then Tullock Road petition. And I believe, Stephen, you're going to reply to both of them. If we can take the Vicks Park petition first, that would be great. Thanks. Is this my opportunity to speak? Yes, Ross, thank you for nodding there. So, I wasn't sure sorry. if Stephen was going first. Chair, we've got our petitioner here, uh, Leslie Orr from the Ben Hard Kirk Road Residents Group. So I think we would bring Leslie in just to so I'll speak to your petition before the, the response report's presented. Okay, and the, the response report was sent out to everybody, I think, prior to tonight's meeting. Yep. Um, so I had a chance to distribute that to the Ben Harn Kirk Road group um, and gather comments back from them, which I've got here to share with everybody, and I can provide them by email afterwards as well, so the minute taker doesn't need to um, you know, document everything. Um, so the Vicks Park petition was set up by our group and primarily to um, gather sort of signatures on it around people who were against the loss of deep green space um, with the new town centre potential site being um, identified, um, one of the potential sites at Vicks Park. Just to say that the methods and time available to collect the public's views was quite limited and the petition was promoted on social media and via a leaflet drop as well. It was an online petition through change.org and the cost for leaflet printing and the time was incurred personally by one member of the group. The way the change.org petitions operate, there is room for error with adding where the signatory lives. We think this is based on a postcode tool, which did put some of the shots postcodes under Motherwell because there's um, information in the response report with regards to the um, you know, distribution of where people live that, that signed the petition. Um, of course, anyone can actually put anything in. They can put any postcode in. Um, but actually that's the same as they could in the North Lancashire Council online consultation process as well. There's no way to actually be confident about where people um, live that are responding to these things. So 258 people provided written responses for the Chots Town Centre vision, including those who approved it, versus 262 people signing the petition wanting to keep the green space. And the petition was set up in relation to loss of green space and the theme in the report, NLC's report regarding the town centre vision and the arguments around that. Um, there's, there, you know, the arguments are around the town centre vision and, 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 you know, the need for that rather than looking at the green space. So the petition didn't ask whether people supported a new town centre. It was specifically about loss of green space. Um, the claim in the petition report that the online public demonstrated majority support for the draft town vision for shots is actually unproven. North Lancashire Council applied their own interpretation to the results of this by allocating unconditional approval, conditional approval and unconditional objection categories. There was no category for conditional objection and at no point were people asked if they were supporting or not supporting the draft town vision. The amendments to the draft town vision plan to, that were made prior to it going to policy and strategy group, so that is to retain the lower Vicks Park. That information was not shared with the public or the town's subgroup prior to the release in the policy and strategy report. And this is um, hugely disappointing given that two members of the Ben Harn Kirk Road area group sat on that subgroup. Um, the Secretary has recently requested information from North Lancashire Council on when the proposal and decision to change the draft was made and the response to this shows that the proposal and decision was after the first town subgroup meeting 
um, before the second and third subgroup meeting. So again, I want to iterate how disappointing it is that the public invested their own personal time and expertise to attend meetings where highly relevant information was withheld. There were miss missed opportunities to foster relationships and reduce anxiety. So we note with interest that the report states any further consultation will be open and transparent. And in the petition response, North Lancashire Council have omitted to comment on the trees and wildlife re relating to Vicks Park and have focused on the sports facilities. The group are aware of the role of Sports Scotland and have made contact with them, as well as nature and conservation links. The group understand that sports facilities can be offered in other locations. Mature trees and wildlife are not transportable. We welcome the amendment to the town centre vision as one step forward to maintaining green space. And we have evidence that a local planner knew of the amendment to the vision on the 19th of June. And again, reiterating how disappointed we are that the town subgroup were not told of this. And it adds question to the integrity of NLC and the way in which they view community partnership and community matters. Why was the subgroup not alerted to this and why could a planner reference this prior to the report going to policy and strategy and to the councillors as well? Um, we do not feel the petition report answers our petition about green space. That's me. Thanks, Liz. Thanks. Chair, you're still on mute, I think. I thought I'd take it off on route. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you very much for that. Stephen, would you like to come in at that point uh, with your response? So I wasn't sure if Ross, were you were you picking this up? No, um, no, just I, uh... I can do, Stephen. I think it was really uh, we were just picking it up because it was really because we presented it. The report is presented for noting. Uh, I should point out that. Although the, the report was circulated, they ticked the approve and noting box. The petition reports are just for the, the board to note the response. Um, so I suppose, Leslie, absolutely pick up on the points you've said there. What I can commit to do is I've noted sort of the time where your petition report response comes in this live feed. I'll feed that back to the relevant team to see if I can get further responses that I could send to you. Um, the, res the response is there. We don't have anyone from the team here tonight. Um, Knox wanted to avoid it is for other reasons that they couldn't attend. But I think the petition report, again, it outlines, I suppose, what we we have been trying to say, and Stephen mentioned earlier, that oh, anything that's going ahead under the town vision, on any part of it, there is going to be further community engagement. We'll be making sure that community engagement is going ahead, and we'll be involved in that community engagement. That won't be left to other council services to decide if it is appropriate or if they need to bother, we'll be making sure that that happens at each and every part of this. And I think the town vision, as the people that attended the subgroup will know and for the wider board, it is split down into lots of smaller projects. So as each project is going to be coming up, well in advance of that, we'll be making sure the community has got full sight of that and they're engaged from the earliest possible opportunity. And again, from our team, we'll be asking that all relevant information is shared with us at the earliest opportunity so that we can have those community discussions and that we can engage in a meaningful and constructive way and avoid hopefully any misunderstanding, misinformation or miscommunication in the community. So Ross, in terms of the kind of questions that I've asked you at the end, is, are you going to let the petition report who have the I think it was David Greer that prepared the report. Are you going to pass it to him to respond to that? Those questions about I'll... yep about why we the subgroup weren't told of the the change to the the plan that was going into policy and strategy and and also around the um, local planner being aware of this information um, on the nineteenth of June. Yeah, I can I can certainly raise those two questions. I think Stephen's just coming in. I'll let him come in first. So it was just to reiterate, you see in terms of the report, Leslie, uh, item three, or, uh, number three, it does say that there'll be no further um, action without any consultation, which we said tonight a few times, um, and that, that it's down there in black and white. The, the other thing I just probably want a wee bit of clarification, you talk about a local planner. Is this a, a local authority planner? Is this one of our planners? So I'm a bit confused that a local planner. No, not a local, not a local authority planner. 
Um, I mean, I can send you more information uh, if you want, Stephen, afterwards. Okay, I, don't need to I know that's fine, Leslie. I understand that's what you're saying. Stephen, I can update you out with the meeting on that. Okay. Thanks for that, Leslie. Francis, would you like to come in? At yeah, I would just like to go back to the meeting earlier when we were talking about trust and things like that. And I'm quite sure now, whenever all the information's now come out later down the agenda, you can understand exactly how people like myself obviously feel when these things happen. And I do feel really disappointed. And again, it comes down to trust and sincerity and honesty. And I'm sure now you'll realise where it was coming from earlier. But we'll wait and see what comes of everything anyway. Thank you. Thanks, Francis. Uh, could we move on to the Tullock Road petition? I don't think Louise Murphy's with us tonight, is she, Ross? Louise isn't with us. No, she's not here. And I did ask if she wanted to nominate someone else to speak to the petition on the behalf, but I didn't receive a response, Chair. OK. Uh, I think, Mary, Mary, do you want to come in at this point? If I remember correctly, going back to response about the car pattern, because there was a, a previous application for that area to be turned into a car park, but it wasn't suitable because it was on a bend. Is that right? Is that my, my remembering that right? And I just wanted to make comment if that is the case and if the land is sold for housing development, then cars are going to be parked there anyway. So cars are, are going to be coming and going. And if houses are built there, the cars that are, are already parked on that PC road, those where, where do they cars then park? Because as we know, Tullock Road is a very busy, congested area. Thanks, Mary. Uh, I know Louise isn't there, but I, I know that uh, Louise would have made that point. Stephen, would, would would you like to respond to the petition at this point? Yeah, just obviously the background is there in the papers again. The background is 25 properties uh, located in the, the Shorts area um, signed a petition with 30 signatories from 25 households objecting to the site being used uh, for, um, for for new built housing. At the moment, the, the, the site has been declared surplus by the, the council, uh, which is actually quite a common thing. Um, loads of sites are actually declared uh, surplus across the council area. Nothing has actually happened with the site at the moment. So the site has not been um, put in the market. Um, so it's not actually been marketed at all just now. But it has, in the first instance, been declared uh, surplus to operational requirements. Uh, normally, what happens when, when a site is declared um, surplus to operational requirements, every service to the council has actually offered it up, first of all, whether they want it or not. And it was looked at, um, I think it's in the report, so it was looked at in terms of the housing service under myself, in terms of new builds, too small a site, and it's not something we would be interested in. Whether there would ever be any interest in it, even in the private market, who knows just now? So I say it's not actually been marketed yet. The opportunity is still there for the community to, to have a look at that, um, to see if there's something else the community want to do with that site, in terms of it's been mentioned, certainly with these, in terms of previously being a play area. Um, hasn't been used as a player for a long period of time. So the report's there in terms of Lee's, um petition initially, and ultimately the Council of the Services response. And the response ultimately just now is, yes, it's been declared surplus, but it hasn't been marketed, and there certainly is no planning application or anything in. And it's something that the community obviously have a close interest in moving forward. But at the moment, nothing has actually happened yet. Yeah, thanks for that, Stephen. I think Leslie's made the point in the chat bar. I think they can't build there because of mine shafts. And I think that Louise had made that point as well. And I met with Louise and Francis uh, a few months ago and we looked at the site. So it's nice to hear, you know, that, that, that it's being considered, you know, that uh, what you had said there. So that's fantastic. If I can move on, I'm conscious of the time, I can move on to standing items. Uh, and one, if I can move on to local development programme, and it's Leanne that's going to take us through that. Thanks, Leanne. Thanks, Chair. Um, there was a wee bit of discussion earlier when, when Ross was talking about participatory budget around some of the projects and things. So there's probably not a lot 
to, to be said tonight. Um, it's really just the standard local development programme uh, report that we bring to each of the community boards. Um, and it really just provides an update on uh, progress with the, the current projects, the outstanding projects for this year. Um, and there's a, the that's a, a, a appendix one. We've got appendix two, which is the, the future potential pro project, um, which really is kind of open to suggestions um, from community members on a kind of rolling basis. Um, we would just, I suppose what we would want to say is that there's there's no um, budget allocated to those projects at this point in time um, and any costs or anything are, are in because at this point um, there has been some feasibility work done on, on some of the projects um, for moving forward but um, the, the, the focus of this report really is on providing an update on the, the current projects um, and to give the opportunity for community groups um, and local people to put forward suggestions to be added to the, the kind of ongoing um, rolling um, suggestions, I suppose, that, that we have for projects moving forward. Um, and that was all that we, we really wanted to update on tonight. We've not got any additional projects that, that have been put forward since the last board meeting that have to be approved, as far as I'm aware. Um, but really just to encourage people to, if you've got ideas for projects that you would like to be reflected for future years, um, that, that we would encourage you to do that um, and, and you make contact with the team to be supported to, to do that. There is a forum that needs to be filled in um, that would provide some of the basic information um, and that would allow the team to then go ahead and look at some of the, the any consultation or um, feasibility what, what, as and when um, budget became available to progress with a project or to prepare for that. So that was all I really had, had to say. Um, there's not really any specific approvals that we're looking for tonight. Um, really just a progress update at this stage. Thanks for that, Leanne. Is there anybody that wanted to make any comments on any of the projects or anyone want to speak about any other projects? Mary, I see your hand up there. And then Frank, if we can have Mary first, and then Frank. Thanks. I think you're, you're on mute, Mary. I'll tell you, yeah, you're on mute, Mary. <laughs> Not like me to forget the button. <laughs> right, Ross, I was wanting to ask, Stain Corner, the year three to four priority, it is changing to year two for Stain Corner. That That's still for discussion. All budgets, of all projects are have notional budgets. And when we set up the PB group, the budget for Stain Corner would actually be almost the entire budget for the Shorts Community Board. So that is going to be a decision the board will need to take now that the budgets are, are confirmed at what they are, about how they want to deliver these projects. If they want to do a single parking project in shorts, that's the budget for the entire board area, or if they want to split that over a couple of years, or how we then deliver that. So that will be taken to the new group that we're working with to look at how all projects will be delivered moving forward and how we can have, I suppose, a balance, because as of just now, the only things really being developed are car parking areas within Shortstown. And we're looking to make sure that local development program covers as wide a range of projects as possible, but also impacts as wide a range of communities as we can. So we do have a finite amount of money and people then are going to have to look at where are our priorities for what we want. So that'll be something that the group that I mentioned earlier, we'll be having those discussions with them to look at how that moves forward. Kenny, I know you're going to speak to Tull, uh, the Turbothy Green space, but if MDs want to come in, because I've already asked a question. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll speak to that later on. Mary, yeah, Frank, I think you wanted to come in at this point too. It was to ask Ross if there's any feasibility study being carried out for the CCTV at Salisbury yet that we discussed on your work round. There hasn't been a feasibility study carried out yet, Frank. What I can advise is I've spoke to our CCTV colleagues. Um, I had an initial conversation with our area police team, but I actually need to speak to the police team in another area. But we're not aware just now of any kind of hotspot things, but they are going to look into it. But for any CCTV that we put in, the council has to carry out, I'm sure you'll know this, but I'm just letting everyone know, they have to carry out a data protection impact assessment that justifies the reasons for us installing a camera in a location. So we do have the note of the location. We are speaking to our team about it and looking at that. But also realistically, 
the, with the cost of CCTV, CCTV, sorry, we'd probably be looking at a single camera initially if it was feasible and met all the criteria. But I'm happy to have further discussions with you around that. So I don't want to talk too widely about the locations of cameras and things uh, before we deploy them, if if that's OK. No, that's fine. I just think, as we discussed on the day, that it would be a major bonus for the police uh, and help them reduce their assets in the ground. You know, so although yeah. there's going to be a cost for one camera, like we discussed, one camera in a specific location would do quite a bit of work and make their guys' lives a, a hell of a lot easier. I'm sure my police colleagues are, are never going to argue against us putting in CCTV to support their work. Um, as I say, we do have processes to go through, but yes, those conversations have started on that already, Frank. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, everyone. Can I move on to stand, uh, standing item two, which is the local outcome improvement plan? Uh, Benny, Lally. Benny, you're going to speak to the Turbothy Green Space. Would you like me to do that just now, Mary? Aye, because yeah. well, right. it's part okay. of the project. So, aye. Well, just, to, just, to let, just to let everyone know, uh, I, I went out and I met with uh, Mary and John and John Joe and Ross, and we looked at the area that borders uh, Southfield Avenue and onto Turbothy Road. And what was mooted by local residents was that they wanted uh, a play park in there, which had been there previously, I believe, uh, and they compared their provision to other areas of shots where there are play parks and those are maintained by the council. So we had discussions around about that. Uh, the other uh, suggestion that was put forward was that the land was taken over by a local group, a local constituted group, and that could be used for either a small play park or outdoor gym or uh, just somewhere quiet uh, for, for people to go. And I think that also we asked at that point as well, you know, could the, the council maintain that piece of land because it is a large piece of grassland. So I'd said to Mary, and I've known this, uh, I've made this known to Ross as well, that I would certainly support uh, the, the play park idea or the outdoor gym uh, to be installed and maintained by the council. Uh, and if that isn't possible, then for a constituted group to come forward and either have a small play park, outdoor gym, a uh, calm area for children and for the council to maintain that. So I was certainly very keen uh, for that to happen. Uh, I put that forward to the council and uh, I believe it, there's been discussions and I'm hoping to have a reply on that very soon. Can I respond to that? Yes, Mary. Yes, and, on you go. Th and thanks for your your input. Um, if I could just go back, um, so that everybody's clear in the processes that's happened. This green area was first raised in July 2019 as participatory budgeting. Um, and as we all know, everything was relocated to Tullock Road about 20 years ago. And there's been nothing at, at the green space ever since. Circumstances such as COVID interfered with the progression of this particular project. Um, we raised it then at our first community board meeting last November and sub subsequent community board meetings. There was an online meeting where you said yourself to both these forgotten about and we should have something here. So you, you, were, you supported that. Uh, that we'd been left behind. Uh, regarding ourselves, it was always the intention to carry out a survey to find out um, local residents' thoughts and other suggestions for the green area. Uh, but again, COVID prevented that. The council also wanted a survey to be carried out. Um, so we did eventually get the survey done. Uh, for a number of reasons then, we we requested that rather than participate in the budgeting, because Turbothe has been left out, we've not had, had anything for quite some time, we asked that money was ring-fenced for some project on, on that space. Uh, over the summer, a community board member requested a freedom of information, and it actually came up that it was going towards surplus to requirements. Ross absolutely immediately responded to my email with that information. After that, yourself 
and Ross came out and met with us, as you said. And at this point, I think it was raised at the earlier community board meeting, this is where community asset transfer come into it. Um, so, you know, the discussion was about that. It was made clear and it has always been made clear that a play park was never going to happen because it's within the distance to Tullock Road. And also with the antisocial behaviour that's already going on in other areas, that choice would maybe have been in doubt anyway. Um, okay, right. So the survey was eventually done um, and that was submitted and that generated about seven, I can't remember if it was seven plus two, now, I think it was nine suggestions generated and I sent yourself a copy of that survey and asked you to send it on to the council officer as well because the council says, well, we need to generate suggestions and what people are wanting in that green area. So that was done, it was admitted, admitted, uh, submitted, advised people a play park wasn't possible. Um, let me turn my page. So I contacted Kenny and asked you for an update and you phoned me last week and basically you said what you said that you were supporting a play park. Um, although the people of Tirbothi have still actually decide and from those suggestions what they want, a play park was not looked upon as being the absolute project that, that people were wanting. They wanted something for children. You also quoted the government funding, um, which I've got the paper uh, of 324,000 for existing play parks uh, that was coming to the council. To, so, as you said, that would free up money that then could be redistributed in other ways. Um, so, it just seems a bit strange that we went, we've done the work, we've done the survey, submitted the survey, um, we've generated the ideas. A play park, we have been continually told, is never going to happen because of the distance. And when I said to you about that, um, you came back to me saying that you would be supporting the play park and the other councillors will support that. So it just seems a bit strange that you're going to support a play park whenever it's known the council's not going to do that. And the survey's still sitting there. We've still to finalise what the public are actually wanting in that area. We've generated the ideas, but it hasn't actually been you know, hammered down yet to, to get a final decision. Thanks, Mary. I think that, you know, when I when I met with you and Ross and John, Joe and John, and, uh, you know, the initial conversation was round about a play park, and certainly I'm supportive of that remaining a, a, a green area. Now, whether that's going to be a play park or whether it's going to be something with uh, the Salvation Army input, or whether it might be an outdoor gym or just a calm area with gardens, I'm certainly very supportive of that. You know, and, and I think it should remain in that. So whether it becomes a play park or whatever people want it to be, and I've used your suggestion at the time, which was a play park. But if it's going to be something else and that's what residents want, then I'll fully support that as well. And you know that too. Look, my suggestion has always been a community garden. That okay. was always my suggestion, but we won't argue about that. But... Uh, so I think we've still got a bit of a process to go with that. And I hear what you're saying that, well, or what I think I hear you saying is, we'll find out what, what the, out of the, the suggestions that have, that have been generated, we'll find out what the public really want out of that and then starting to take it forward. And we expect feedback from the council as well. Yep, that's where we are with it. Thanks for right. that, Mary. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks. No problem. Can we move now on to the LOIP with Maureen? Maureen, would you like to speak to give us an update on that? Yeah, I'm going to give you a quick update because the papers have been circulated as well with the update. Um, apologies for not having my camera on. My signal keeps dipping out and in and I just lost everybody about 20 seconds ago and I was freaking out in case you got to me before it came back. So <laughs> the, the LOIP updates, um, 
We're going to present two of the priorities this evening um, and two will be presented to each board meeting. You'll be aware that there is so much information in them, it could take up an entire board meeting just presenting the updates for each one. Um, an annual report containing updates to all will be circulated at a date that's still to be agreed. So also with the papers that come out, Craig has provided a separate report from the environmental subgroup. Um, and we have further updates in the, the LOIP report, the, the larger paper that you got out, with information from other groups and organisations contributing to progressing actions across the area. Um, we also have updates on community engagement. I'm not going to read them out to you. You can see it at your leisure. They're all in there. Um, but I do have some additions to make to the one on community engagement, as well as the amazing work that's been done by Janice, who's not here to take applause tonight, uh, for the Shots Tenants and Residents Group. Um, through her hard work, um, we have secured funding through Public Health Scotland to actually do some more engagement locally. And we are planning to do blended engagement, both face to face and online, and also youth engagement to take things forward so that we make sure that we are reaching as wide an audience across Vertissa as possible um, to make sure that people are aware of what the community boards do, about the input that they can have, about the things that are happening in the area and how people can get involved and make sure that all voices as much as possible are heard. Um, so that, that hopefully we'll start with planning to have our first meeting, our first planning meeting for those engagement activities before Christmas. So other updates since the papers have gone out, there's been a lot of engagement work in Hart Hill around possible environmental projects to provide um, an additional tranquil space. They already have one down next to the War Memorial. If anybody's seen it, they'll know it's an absolutely beautiful area now. Um, they're looking to create a small garden at the area previously identified for the sco scooter track behind the community centre and we will be meeting soon to progress that. There are obviously um, things that they have to go through. Mary, you'll be aware of what they are because these are the things that we've had to go through for every area. We have to look at feasibility. We have to look at whether there's a community group willing to take on a project. Um, so all, all these things will happen. So um, We'll, we'll progress them as far as we can, and if they come to fruition, that's fantastic. Um, also in Hart Hill, we're working with local volunteers to gauge interest in a community shed project, and we're hoping to have a public meeting early in the new year. Uh, we've had correspondence on behalf of Shorts Bon Accord Youth Team to cite a port of cabin as changing rooms in Hart Hill Public Park. That's another thing that we will be progressing through feasibility and see what support there is in the area for it. In Salisbury, there's been immense community engagement um, around their Living Heritage and Community Shed project. They have permission now to site it in the local park, which is fantastic. Um, we have been discussing creating a community resilience group in the area and looking at other improvements around the village. Um, there's lots going on across the area. Um, there's stuff going on in Hartwood as well right now around a uh, village signage to actually create an identity for the village. So that when people are coming into Hartwood, they know that it's Hartwood. Um, so there's, there's lots of things going on across for Tissa. Um, and again, we are open to any ideas. We are happy to take things forward with you, see how we can progress those ideas if you would just like to get in touch. But I would urge you to please have a look at the excerpts that are included as updates in that large LOIP document. There's also a subgroup being set up, not for the community boards, but only to do with the LOIPs to see how the engagement is going. Um, and that will be across all nine board areas that are inviting representatives from it. The information is contained within that larger LOIP report, so please have a look at it. And that's me. Thanks, Maureen. That was a great update. And I think, you know, you covered a lot of things where the villages are, are starting to work in partnership with uh, the council and some of the projects and things and what they're looking at, you know, with gardens, etc. It sounds absolutely fantastic. If, the, if there's no comments on that, I'm conscious of the time and we all we have, you know, our partner updates. So I'd like to, to move on to that just now, if that's OK. Uh, and I'd like to bring in Alan Mulholland uh, from Police Scotland first. Alan. Hi, good evening. Hi. Um, listen, I'll, um, I, I, I'll go on with some updates that I have uh, just uh, based on what I, I know that the group have mentioned previously and what's been passed to me by the council. And then I would look to, to just get some uh, comments in relation to maybe some of the other things that's going on in shots and the surrounding areas that we can look to, to address and, and, and assist, assist you with. Um, 
Speeding complaints is, um, is something that's come up uh, on a number of occasions, and it's certainly something that's coming through uh, from our councillor colleagues um, and MSPs uh, in relation to kind of specific locations and in, in the more round about the shots Hartwood area. Uh, what I can say is that I have been in touch with our traffic uh, management colleagues, and uh, they have done traffic management uh, surveys uh, within West Main uh, Street, Hart Hill, um, Hartwood. Well. Ben Har Road uh, in Shorts, Station Road, Shorts Kirk Road in Shorts, uh, Bow, Bow, Bow House Bog Road. Uh, and um, what I can say is that certainly during these surveys, the, the, be it um, they measure the survey over a period of time, uh, there will be one or two speeding motorists, but uh, in general, they found the speeds to be of uh, such that uh, they wouldn't be employing any further uh, services at any of these locations. Uh, what I would say is Hartwood uh, Road and Hart, Hartwood, uh, they did find that to be a road where um, the North Lanarkshire Council are going to look at signage and our uh, colleagues in road policing are going to look at uh, further measures they can take in relation to enforcement and education. Um, during the, the, the year period, uh, we the, our traffic colleagues again have been out and they, they did a month long in January at the A71 Overton. Uh, in February, Hartwood Road and Hartwood. Uh, in March, the B717 in Shorts near, uh, and onto the A73 bog side. And in April, uh, the, the Villages campaign ran uh, round about the B717 Hartwood uh, and Hartwood and Hart Hill. Um, and in October, most recently, the B717 in Ben Hart Road. Um, the, this is a uh, locations that they will continue to patrol and I'm told that the all the villages are on their patrol matrix and they are taking enforcement action at all these locations. Um, I'll move on and uh, as I say I'm happy to take um, any specific comments around about issues that you're having locally uh, and, and we can address them afterwards. Um, certainly in, in relation to the disorder issues that we've seen uh, in the area uh, I've kind of talked about it before and I, I, I heard someone mentioning uh, motocrossers um, and off-road bikes, etc. And I know that we did have that particular problem up at the Shorts Nature Park, uh, where we had street drinking youths uh, were hanging about, and uh, we 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 had a couple of days of action up there, and actually joined the volunteer partnership along with the local councillors and community groups, uh, and I believe that resolved the issue. And I've not heard anything further on that, so I'm hopeful that that is still the case. And again, you can update me if there's anything further that I need to take it away and address from that. There has been a uh, fire sentence in Shield Gardens and Shots, um, probably more so concentrated uh, during the kind of early part of the month and to the latter part of October. Uh, what I would say is uh, our local officers, which I've shared with you on, on the, the chat there, uh, John Evans and uh, Kenny Samuel, have actually done an extensive piece to work around about that. I have identified a, a group of young people who are hanging about in that area. And there's an ongoing inquiry um, where we are hopeful that we will have a positive uh, outcome from that. So there is a positive line of inquiry in relation to that that particular issue. Uh, we, I think the first meeting ever came on, and apologies, this is probably only my second shots meeting. It's just where the, the times have fallen. Uh, I've, I've not been able to attend personally, but um, I did promise to do a Crime Stoppers leaflet drop. Uh, and th that was in kind of collaboration with many different uh, groups, but uh, more so the the officers, along with the restorative justice team, attended the, the Spring Hill area, and they did uh, leaflet drops in the area in relation to Crime Stoppers leaflets, just so that we can get an indication of any any other issues, uh, any crime issues that we need to be addressing, and it gave local people that uh, opportunity to phone or. Uh, Make contact with Crime Stoppers anonymously uh, without fear of um, of their details having to be taken. Um, and again, I've not got a full update on exactly where that's led us, um, but I, I believe that that went down quite well. Uh, the officers were speaking to local people and they were really quite thankful for that bit of work. Uh, going back to the motorbikes, and uh, I make no apologies, actually, motor, motocrossers are the bane of a lot of people's lives. A lot of people want motocrossers, and we actually had a discussion on this group, I'm sure. Where you know there was a, a pro for it as well, and and that's fine. You know there, there certainly would be if we had local parks and people were being appropriate and taking their bikes to parks which were private and had the necessary insurances. But 
unfortunately we don't and, and we have seen incidents uh, certainly down in Wishaw where people have been um, unfortunately lost their lives as a result of more bikes so we did uh, start Operation Moto X by use of the council's uh, funded bikes, the, um, the, the off-road bikes that police have and we actually have focused our efforts up in the shots in, in surrounding areas, uh, the kind of full war 13 area um, of Fortisat and uh, I'm We've actually had an excellent response from the public on that. Uh, not only the seen police officers, um, because again, police officers can be there uh, and you don't see them. They're, they're in stealth mode as they're walking by your house, you know, and you don't see them unless you're at the window. Whereas with the motorbikes, you certainly hear them. And I know that, that, that we may be adding to the antisocial element, but we do try and keep it um, uh, out with the hours of darkness where we can, or certainly out with the hours of bedtime. Um, and certainly it's, it's given us a really good response from the public because they see something different out there and uh, the bikes seem to be making a real a real difference. And what I can report, and I know stats are never really a great thing, but I think it's important uh, to actually give you some sort of statistic around about this. Since we launched the Operation Moto X in uh, July this year, along with the, the leader of the council and, and uh, our community board partners, um, We've actually seen a reduction in the QE, so the QE sub, which is your subdivisional boundary, uh, a 40, 45% reduction in antisocial uh, incidents uh, relating to motorbikes and mo uh, quad bikes. And to, to give you an indication, the, in 2019 to 2020, uh, there was 260 incidents in 2000, uh, sorry, July, July to November 1920, 2000, 260 incidents. And in July to November 2020, 21, there was 148. So that's a reduction of 120 incidents. Uh, and actually, if you take a minute to just understand what that might mean, that, that might mean we've stopped somebody from riding up a footpath and knocking somebody down and them losing their life out of that. And I think that's quite a significant uh, uh, reduction in, in that type of incident. So we are we are currently doing a wee bit of work again, along with our partners in the council and various other people, to see if we can we can uh, bring uh, further assets uh, to the table to allow more police officers to be out and about on uh, wood bikes, stroke motor bikes, and, and engage with the community, engage with people who who want to conduct this type of activity and give them the necessary advice, um, so that we don't one have people being charged, we don't have parents getting charged for causing permitting their children to be on them. And, and we certainly don't um, have anybody's dog or uh, persons uh, injured uh, as a result of a motorbike being somewhere where it shouldn't be. I'm just going to my wee sheet here. I think uh, that really that really was was me. Um, happy to take any any comments. And and as I said I, I, before, I tend not to give an actual uh, report on this because my my want from these groups is really just to to take what your comments are back to my team so that we can start to make that difference in, in uh, preparation for your next community group, uh, board meetings. Thank you. Thanks for the update, Alan. That was fantastic. If I can bring in Catherine at this point. Catherine. Thanks, Councillor Stevenson. Um, and like Maureen, I apologise for not having my camera on tonight, but I'm having some issues and I don't want to risk it. Um, can I maybe make a suggestion moving forward? I don't know what the rest of the members feel and I don't know what the other partners feel, but perhaps it would be worthwhile for the partner updates to be sent in in advance um, to Ross, perhaps, and then distributed with other papers, because I always feel by the time it gets to this time, we've ran over, people are getting a bit tired, and I always feel a bit stressed that I have to rush. And for anybody that knows me, they know that I like to talk. Um, and I don't like to feel hurried in any way. So um, it's just a suggestion. I would be happy to put my, my um, update in prior to the meeting. Um, for those of you that don't know, my role at GBT means that I work very closely with um, Maureen and Ross, um, with the community to make sure that we're offering them um, the best support. Um, and to that end, we've recently been doing a lot of work um, with local groups. So Baby Bears um, are back up and running in Heart Hill. Um, and that's a mother and toddler group that we managed to secure just under £2,000 from the local consortium. Um, and they've been delivering um, with support from GBT, um, outdoor activities and um, play on pedals. Um, and the idea behind it was that we'd upskill the leaders of that group so that they can do that moving forward. 
part of that funding has secured um, some balanced bikes for them and some helmets so that they've got more resources to work with. Um, and that I reported back was very successful. Um, we also got some funding again through the consortium for Salisbury Crochet Group. Um, and they did a very successful Halloween event, um, which both Maureen and I attended in full fancy dress. Um, and it was very well attended and, and everybody was really enjoying themselves. So we did a bit of um, consultation there and we're waiting on the feedback from that. Um, for anybody that knows the Getting Better Together Centre, will know that you can come in and get um, sanitary products free of charge from any of our ladies' toilets. Um, with um, some help from North Lanarkshire Council funding, we are now running a pilot project where we will be delivering um, period products to the door. So if anybody knows anybody that's struggling, um, any young ladies or families that are struggling to get period products, all they need to do is uh, contact us um, um, and give us the details and we'll make sure they get um, a delivery of products every three months. Um, part of the funding is going to be used to get more electric bikes and things so that we've been very aware of um, how we're delivering these things. And I will be working with um, our local partners down at New Mains and NCT um, and beyond to make sure that they are distributing these products as well. Um, I don't know if anybody noticed that we had an ice rink in shots last week when we had a um, Christmas light switch on. Um, we had over 300 people attend the event and the kids had an absolute ball. So that was really good. We've got a shopping trip tomorrow for some of our older adults going to McKinnon Mills to get some of their Christmas shopping in. So there'll be a bus load of them heading off down there tomorrow. Um, we've got our adult tea dance coming up on the 3rd of December. There's still tickets available. Don't panic. You can phone up and get your tickets. Um, we've got our Christmas afternoon teas running on the 7th and 9th for our older adults. And the Santa teas um, are running the week of the 13th of December. So there's lots happening. There's lots of really good work going on out there. If anybody wants any more information, you know where I am. I'm just in it getting better together and you can pop in any time. Thanks very much, Councillor Stevenson. Thanks, Catherine. That was great to hear all that. Uh, if we can move on, Ross, I don't believe, do we have Des from fire here t tonight from the fire service? We don't We don't have any colleagues from fire tonight, Council Stevenson, okay. but we, did, we circulated we a Mark, update from them. Yeah, okay. Can, yeah, that's Kenny. Fine. Kenny, can I just make a wee yes, response please. to um, the police officer? I was just sure. at the last meeting, I raised some concern about the speed of lorries in particular going up Ben Har Road um, in the evenings and even through the night. And it was just to say that we've noticed a bit of an improvement with this. And I suspect it might be to do with the raising of the height of the bridge at, um, through New Mains at Bellside. Um, that perhaps the lorries aren't using this route any longer. Um, so it was just a comment because I had raised it the last time just to say that we, we have noticed a difference and I wonder if that is the reason. Thanks for that, Leslie. I think that's an important point. Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the raising of the height has, has certainly been uh, helpful. Uh, if I can bring in Mark from the NHS, thanks for your patience, Mark. If I can bring you in just now. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, you're fine, Mark. Brilliant. So, apologies there, Lily, and uh, couldn't get on. IT issues. No problem. Why I'm leaving my camera off as well. Uh, but keep it short and sweet. I haven't got anything to update on from NHS perspective at present. Um, but I do agree with what uh, Catherine brought up about us following on updates and just keeping it a bit shorter for everybody. We can certainly do that. And um, I can probably provide a lot more detail uh, for things if people have questions as well. That's great. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Jean, do you, have you anything that you want to put forward from Van L? Sorry, I was muted there. Just Sorry. about the we AGM coming up on the 7th of December and followed by our annual conference. And we're looking for any groups that want their what, so the work they've done through COVID are that highlighted or if they're doing anything or done anything towards uh, combating poverty and things like that through, through the pandemic. Uh, if you're interested in getting highlighting your group at the conference, who's getting in touch? That's it. 
That's lovely, Jean. Thanks very much for that. Leslie, I saw that you had, as we move forward on to agenda item 14, I saw that you were, you'd said that you were happy to leave that to the next meeting. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't think there's any urgency. There's nothing kind of changing or moving imminent plans around that. So I'm happy to leave that. I think Mary was down as well as an, an update. Mary, are you happy to leave it for an, another meeting? Yeah, okay, Mary. And I'll, I'll come to Sharon in a second, but with the community funding streams, which was Louise, uh, and I was going to suggest because Louise wasn't on that we carried that forward to the next meeting anyway. So uh, we have an issue there with local speeding and parking issues update, and we have Sharon with us uh, tonight. So Sharon, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Um, so uh, sorry, although Alan had spoken about this, this speeding in various areas, uh, I'm concerned about the speeding in Dyfrig Street. Uh, I live on Dyfrig Street, and I'm in between the, you know, the the hill. So there's a blind summit, and there's a a bend, and I'm in in between that. And just in my memory, which is it's not great, but even in my bad memory, I can recall five accidents just within a, a stone's throw, um, over a number of years where cars have come off the road and either hit the parked cars, you know, obviously Dive Creek Street has the, the parking bays, uh, the whole length of the road, which is great. So cars have came off and either hit a parked car or if there's been no parked car there, they've came right off the road and across the pavement and um, either hit somebody's fence or went right into the garden um so and that and that's five instances that i can remember ju just in this this but you know that i can see um and i think it's just it, it's just luck um and and nothing else that somebody's not been killed so far uh and i'm i'm so really i would like to see traffic calming measures i don't think anything else is going to make any difference. Apologies. I don't think anything else would make any difference. I don't think um I think the efforts by the police would be would result in maybe a temporary um traffic calming, but in the long run it would have to be traffic calming measures. And I was in the I'm in the recycling centre down the street um quite a lot and there's seven speed bumps in that tiny, tiny wee area. Where no kids play because kids obviously are not going to be playing in there. They're not even allowed out of the car. But yet, a, a road where there's, gosh, lots and lots of kids and um, walking on the path. Coming, there's a school in this street walking on the path, playing just outside their gardens, or even they're not even safe in their gardens because cars just come off the road um, and in the gardens. But yet, we've got no speed bumps here or any other traffic calming measures. Um, I did. I did phone up the police and the council several years ago. The only thing I can recall from that is that the police had said, uh, "I've got three kids now who are a bit up," but at the time they were younger, and the police had said that, um, "Well, kids shouldn't be um, unaccompanied outside the gate if they're under eleven. So <laughs> that was the only response. And obviously, in the in the real world, kids are going to be walking. On the pavement, and I just think Dive Creek Street is not safe. Um, I, I made a freedom information request for accident stats on this road, but um, that was just recently. I've not received anything back. So I spoke to one of the councillors, uh, Martin McCulloch, who said to bring it up at at, at this board, uh, the community board meeting. Uh -huh. So, is there any advice? Thanks for that, Sharon. Thanks for coming forward with that. I appreciate that. And I think that you're absolutely right. I think that all the councillors have had representation from various residents over the years uh, about Dyfrig Street in particular. It's one of the, the sort of hot spots for, for people telling us that they're speeding. So I, I know that Alan will have his thoughts on that, but maybe I'd like to bring in maybe Ross to maybe give some ideas about you know what can be done uh, through the the community board, if anything can be done with traffic calming measures, and maybe he he can give us an idea. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks for that, Sharon. Really nice to see you along at the board. Um, I think you made your points very well. That's the kind of local knowledge we need to know. 
about where should we be targeting resources? Where should we be focused on? And it's the sort of thing, potentially we can look under our local development programme as a project. But what I would be happy to do, if you've got a freedom of information request in, once you get the information for that, if you'd be happy to share that with me, I'll have a look at it. I'll speak to our colleagues in roads and find out what the process is for putting in sort of traffic calming or mitigation measures. Quite happy to have that chat with our colleagues in Police Scotland. I know that any kind of road safety initiatives we'd be looking at, they'd be very supportive of that. And we'll certainly look at what's within our gift to try and make happen in the area. So if this is, as you're saying, and I think it's came through our elected members as well, this is a particular hotspot area and there's been multiple accidents. We'll look at all the information and we'll look at what could be a productive way forward. And I'll, I'll do my best to try and get something in place for the next board meeting to be able to update on that about what we could yes. potentially do. The, the, the last, just fit my memory when I made the phone call a few years ago about it, I think the police had said it's not a hot spot. I don't know what constitutes a hot spot, if it's fatalities or if it's, I, I don't know if it's accidents just uh, without fatalities, I don't know. Um, but that was a response then. So <clears throat> I, I really don't know what would have to constitute a hot spot because, I, like I say, I, I can recall five accidents just within a stone's throw in me, um, where cars have actually came off the road. And it's not like um, bumps between two cars on the road. So it's not, it's, so to me, it seems like speed because it's one single car coming off the road, you know? So to me, that's a speed, I don't oh, know. But... Sharon, I'm more than happy to take that one. It would be helpful as Thank well, you. out with the meeting, if you could email me. See just the location or if it's next to your address, just where that is, don't share it in the meeting. Uh, yeah. I know that we have looked at Dyfrig Street before for some parking to try and ease congestion around maybe like burger vans or things like that. The issue being that the council don't own a lot of the ground that runs down there, but we can certainly do things on the road. So we'll look into yeah. that and we'll look at what options there are and either bring that back to a future community board or actually look at just progressing a project under our community safety initiatives and we'll report back on that. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for bringing that along, Sharon. Thanks. That's really important. And thanks, Ross, for your response. Uh, if I can move on to agenda item 15, which is AOCB, any other competent business? Is there anything that anyone would like to, to raise at this point? Alan? Hi, listen, I know actually all the comments and time are really appropriate here because actually there's probably not enough time to talk about some of the really important things that people are bringing up tonight. Um, listen, uh, firstly, Sharon, I want to apologise in relation to some of the response that you got from Police Scotland there. I'm, I'm not, it's not a response that I would expect. Uh, and what I would say is I'll link him Ross and we will certainly look at your problem. Um, what I have to say, and, and I would, this, that this uh, for us to, to assess a situation uh, within the community, we need to know about it. Now, often we're getting councillor inquiries where it's not ever been, we've never been told about it, but the councillor has been asked to make representation. And it's very, very difficult when we look into these things because we can't evidence it. Um, so all I would say to you is that if you're having a problem within your area, no matter whether it's speeding or disorder or violence or whatever it might be, if you wouldn't mind phoning 101 or Crime Stoppers um, would be an appropriate way to do that. They would let us know and then we can record it on our storm command and control and then that that will give me the evidence that we require yeah. to go and do something about um yeah, the, the issue Alan, that's, ex that's exactly the advice that um councillor mcculloch had said to me to do because to be honest the, the cars zoom by and there's no way you could get a number play or or even the, the type of car i'm not going so i would all i would be able to phone up and say is there's a car just sped by and I haven't done that because I thought that's quite useless information, but I, I can see now that it's not useless information. So I, I will do that. Thanks. No, and, and listen, this is unanimous. It's not, you've got your particular complaint there, but I'm talking just generally about uh, complaints. At the end of the day, we're a service that, that requires to, to service the public and it's you, your service, not mine. So if you've got a problem, no matter what information you have, please let us know. Go into the office even and let the local officers know. Um, and we will we take all these seriously. Since I've been online, I've sent numerous emails to police officers um, asking them to do certain things for me. So um, please, we, we, we do listen, we do talk to one another and we certainly will continue to, 
to do um, as, as, as good as we can for you. Still on mute, Charles. <laughs> Keep forgetting. It's been so long. If I can move on to item 16, uh, if we can have a date and time of the next meeting. Kenny, I've got my hand up. Oh, sorry, Mary. Sorry, sorry. I'll come back to you. Sorry, can I go now? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Right. It's just to go back um, to Spring Hill Farm. That's yep. on the agenda. Um, I submitted a letter to Ross and Stephen about Spring Hill Farm going back to when it was approved in 2018 and the conditions by which it was approved. Um, and for, oh gosh, what's the term now that shows why it's recommended? Not not conditions, but justification, reasoned justification. And part of that um, had said it would give additional housing provision and choice. So the only choice that's up in Spring Hill Farm is actually private. And there's no guarantee that social housing will come on at a later date. So when it went to application in 2020, it was approved, but there was nothing about the social housing in it. So I'm just wondering what's happened with that letter because I've not even had any acknowledgement about it. And I did write at the top, I think this uh, would benefit from some discussion. I'm not sure if Stephen's watched coming in on that in a second, Mary. I'll need to check back on that uh, if that's come in recently. Because it was, I think it was the 8th of November. It started in November. I think uh, it was the 8th of November. I'll be honest with you. We have been snowed under with the, the work around the boards and things. However, again, I think if this is the plan, if it's a planning thing, it goes to planning. I think previously Stephen had made it quite clear. I think his term was he would bite the developer's hands off if he could get housing in the, the development. But there is no requirement for them to sell no. houses to the council. So it's not, and I think I'm sure Stephen made it crystal clear, he would take the the houses. So I see Stephen's hands just popped up, just his cameras off. I'll let him come in on this, Mary. Right, thanks. Thanks, Ross. Thanks, uh, Mary. Um, yeah, I've actually, we've got it and I've asked Pamela Humphreys, who, as you know, is uh, the head of planning, for comment on exactly what you said. And just again, to reiterate, in terms of that site, um, John Duffy had mentioned earlier on as well, but keep more, it's keep more that's there. We have bought off the shelf from keep more at the the start of Craig Nuke and Motherwell, going into Wisher then, up at a part of the old Ravenscraig site, we actually bought um, 12 and they've actually offered us more again um, in that site. So we would absolutely buy off the developer. And in terms of my role overall as community champion and head of housing, I have uh, raised that with Pamela to get a response back to your, your inquiry about the mixture yeah. between social housing and private housing. Well, the, the actual inquiry that's been raised is the process that was applied to the actual um, approving of the applications. They don't really marry up. I don't, and I don't want to get into the big debate now because yeah. you know, time's from on, obviously. But I think I think the letter that I sent in made it quite clear. You know, it was about the the process that had been applied to these two applications, and they do not marry up. But anyway, I know you're saying you've passed it to Pamela, yeah. and um, we'll, we'll, and it's not a complaint. <laughs> it's not well, a complaint. <laughs> well, from my point of view, Mary, I'm wanting clarification as well. So if I'm being very <laughs> selfish in terms of my role as head of housing, I'm desperate Aye. for housing up there. So it's it absolutely not a complaint. So we're Aye. seeking clarification. Um, well, and as soon as I get that, I'll come back to you. Aye, because I think it would actually merit... Um, discussion between people as opposed to right here's a, a response and we've made a complaint it was not raised as a complaint um so that's fine and john duffy john joe and i went up to spring hill farm we've got a couple of suggestions um so i'll, I'll speak with you later about that okay um the other thing that i had under any any other business can wait to the next meeting Thanks, Mary. Thanks for that. And thanks for your response, Stephen. Uh, if we can just go to the date and time of the next meeting, uh, if one of the officers has that, that would be great. Uh, 
I'm, I don't think the, the dates have actually been set yet for the next cycle, Councillor Stevenson. We're just trying to work that out for exactly when they'll fall in due to wider events that will be happening next year across the Council. We're anticipating it'll be towards the end of February, so still in a three-month cycle. But as soon as the date's set, uh, we will be sending it out. Just to notify everyone, we will be looking potentially to change it. Shots has fallen on the last Thursday, the last couple of meetings, and that has had quite a few diary conflicts with some people. So we might look at trying it on a different night to see if that works better for the majority. Thanks for that, Ross. Thank oh. you. And thanks to everyone for the participation and your patience and your comments tonight. I think it was really good to, there were some really good discussions there, uh, probably some good outcomes and things to, to carry forward for the next meeting as well. So thanks to everyone again, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much. Thanks bye. to you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Jill.